uh, electric vehicles and also how to uh, make more and more in uh, telecommunication using the smartphone and of course uh, using the, the laptops and computers as uh, uh, what we call the, the, the implementation of the, uh, the fourth uh, industrial revolutions using the computers and using the artificial intelligence. It means that there's many products of electronics and also it means that uh, there is many, uh, we, we face uh, everywhere with the electronics. And with this situation, we know that electronics is one of the process of industry. So uh, one, we have to uh, aware about the, the, what we call the raw material for the electronics and also not the electronics in the, in the electric or the component, but also how the case and almost uh, coming, uh, the case is from the plastics and on some of these are the, from the poly, uh, polymer materials. In order to the industries, uh, yes, uh, some industry are very concerned about the, the waste, but again, when we look at the, the people in the uh, Indonesia and of course in other countries, uh, the whole countries, we know the number of the electronics and also the e-waste, uh, especially uh, with the polymer materials and going uh, rapidly increasing. So it is very hard to say that uh, finally it can be uh, effect and uh, the negative uh, or the, the bad uh, effect to the society, to the uh, environment. So in the case of this, I think this workshop, the series of workshops on the sustainable production system and the life cycle assessment and very uh, appropriate uh, with the title so that we it can improve and in, improve and also to increase our awareness regarding to the measurements uh, sustainability to support the circular economy so how to how to implement that uh, in the circular economy uh, it will come to uh, net zero waste and also finally And at the same time, have to uh, the cost uh, efficient and also environmentally friendly. I think uh, how to implement in uh, in the same time in the three uh, uh, the point the environmentally friendly, the cost efficient, and of course how to comply to the uh, uh, specification on the the global standard are very important. And the, with this uh, situation, a unique combination is achieved between the establishment, the cross-section specialist field of the reliability and also sustainability. However, uh, from Indonesia, uh, we know that Professor Bambang uh, Prasetya, Dr. Edi Wiloso, and also uh, Ms. Ernie Skocho are also the research group uh, with uh, sustainable production and life cycle uh, our LCA at uh, BRIN, our National Research and Innovation Agency are co coordinating of this workshop are very uh, in case of this, uh, uh, these topics. And we know that if you look at the, this program about the electric vehicle, we use much uh, more in uh, the plastics uh, or the polymer materials. We use the battery, more battery in, in, in uh, uh, development and finally using as uh, daily uh, commuters using the electric vehicles in the in the future and of course by this uh, what we call the uh, the new energy uh, like a solar cell it means that it will come a very big project in the future so in case of this one it will more and more waste uh, regarding to the the plastics, the batteries, and of almost with the the electric uh, electronics uh, 
component. So how to uh, overcome that, that problem in the future are also very important to be uh, ready from now by doing the research uh, together with Brin and also Fraunhofer Institute since uh, Brin now are open uh, in such uh, research uh, infrastructure regarding to the laboratory, for example, for the electronics, laboratory from, uh, for the uh, materials and also uh, laboratory from, uh, for the, uh, for example, electricity and so on. Even uh, not only the laboratory, we are also open for this uh, 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 moment is uh, uh, using the research vessels. So it uh, become uh, able to, uh, for example, to, to do research in these oceans, to finding about the, the waste, uh, micro and also nanoplastics, which uh, flowed by the uh, Gulf Stream and so on. So it is uh, very uh, useful to look at and to trace the, the where and also to go to where uh, the plastic is become uh, since the streams uh, are also uh, give such kind of uh, effect to this uh, waste. I think uh, the, uh, we, we can also identify and works with, uh, together with uh, Brin and also Fraunhofer Institute on this research initiation on implementat, uh, implementing the life cycles inventory in Indonesia and also building the life cycles inventory to enable the sustainable uh, production and also consumption patterns and regulation in Indonesia. I think uh, the topics uh, that uh, hopefully it, it is also being uh, discussed among the, the researcher to uh, such kind of the importance of the measuring uh, sustainable to sustainability to support the circular economy for the electronics, uh, e-waste, and also the polymer materials, and also uh, interesting also about the charging station for the light mobility application. Since now in Indonesia we are started to put more and more uh, uh, charging station uh, since uh, the, the 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 policy. Uh, linked to the uh, what in what the the electric vehicle should be uh, implemented as soon as possible, and uh, the other thing is to the recycles plastics and also battery from the electronics waste and also environmental assessment of such uh, processes. We know that uh, the plastic and also battery should be uh, the uh, hazardous uh, waste then uh, it takes a uh, long time to be uh, deteriorations. <coughs> As uh, we shared a lot of uh, common interest between uh, Brin and also the Fraunhofer, I said, M, we agree and happy uh, if we can uh, make such kind of collaboration in a good opportunity in the next step to start the discussion for the exchange, the object, the idea, and also uh, uh, looking for the opportunity to have such kind of a new uh, establishment of the research uh, uh, laboratory in the future. I think that there is uh, our uh, agreed for uh, this uh, e, uh, workshop series. Hopefully, we will discuss more and more in fruitful and also fruit, uh, fruitful uh, discussion so that uh, finally we can uh, get such kind of the what we call the in principle the sustainable production system and also how to implement the life cycle assessment in uh, every uh, sector in Indonesia thank you very much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh terima kasih waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Thank you very much uh, for the opening speech from our uh, Deputy Chairman of National Research Institute uh, of uh, Research, National Research Institute and Innovation Agency, uh, Dr. Mego Pinandito. Uh, we wish 
uh, we can continue this discussion with the research collaboration between Brin and Fraunhofer Institute. Next, uh, we move to the next agenda for this uh, morning session in Berlin or in the afternoon in Jakarta. Uh, Professor Bambang Prastia, uh, he was the former national standards, uh, chairman of the national standardization body. Uh, currently, he also the chairman of national biosafety of Indonesia. He will uh, give some uh, like uh, sharing with the title role on of the circular economy in the mitigation of the climate change. Uh, Professor Bambang Prasetya, time is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pa Nugroho. Uh, it is clear for my present uh, my slide. Uh, excellent, Prof. Okay, excellent. thank you very much. Uh, honorable Pak yang kita hormati sama-sama Pak uh, Meko Pinandito yang sudah memberikan speech. Thank you very much for the remark, uh, opening remark, and for your time and continue supporting to the, uh, our group here. And honorable distinguished guests from Germany, uh, Dr. Christian Klem and also Dr. Nukur, uh, Dr. Karsten Siske. And my colleague from Indonesia, Pak Edi Wiloso dan uh, Bu Erdi Sukoco, distinguished participant in Indonesia. Very good afternoon and good morning in Germany. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, it is great honor for me to have this opportunity, especially in this very important discussion. And thank you for colleagues from Germany will be share uh, about the kind of the sustainable production. I would like to share this topic just to introduce a, a future discussion about LCA and also about the sustainable development. My title is the importance of circular economy for supporting the mitigation of climate change. I still use the PSN because it is in the process in January will be become a, also in the, in the brim uh, and my colleagues from the PSN also. Uh, just for the introduction, beside COP uh, to the 26 in Glasgow, I think it is uh, very important to review a little bit in connection with uh, circular economy and also the sustainable development. First, is, it is uh, data I got from the United in Science 2021, a multi-organization multi high-level compilation of the latest climate science information. When we uh, pay attention about the greenhouse and gas concentration, some point maybe can uh, see here that the concentration of the major greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and also the uh, nitrogen and OX continue increase. Even it is reducing the methane is achieved with uh, completed the Paris Agreement, but it is still not strong. The effort to reduce the methane also gases. In terms of sea level, the global mean sea level rose 20 cm from 1900 to 2018. It is also impact with the, our uh, ecosystem in terms of the uh, habitat. It hits weight and wildfires, rising temperature are linked to increase heat related mortality, for example. In terms with, with connection in with COVID-19 infection, the climate hardship such as uh, heat waves, it is also uh, keep a higher higher uh, risk in the in terms of the heart. Sorry, I my slide is moved, yeah, Pak Nugroho. Working very well. Bro. Okay, thank you very much. Just it is a review. I think the participants already know about this concept of the circular economy and linear economy. Just to, to remind us that the, this is a very important key point that the linear economy is uh, uh, from the resource and production and distribution and also consumption and then resulted to waste. Maybe this start already a long time that waste also also utilized as a certain product, but in the circular circular economy concept, it is more comprehensive, more detailed, more uh, fine tuning in the 
every step from the first production, second production, secondary production, and uh, the consumption and the end user in terms of uh, unrenewable resource, we try as much as possible to loop also by risk cycle, reuse, regenerate, and also remanufacture. Uh, re and then uh, in terms of the renewable resource, we can convert in, into several uh, biochemical, for example, to make a feedstock in certain industry or back to the uh, to the nature as a uh, farming or and so on. In terms of the biogas production, it is also one alternative. Even it is the biogas also uh, still still uh, release the CO two, but uh, it is prolong the process. And another concept to come from we can see maybe this is also very schematic to follow that the concept of result in circular economy for example here the breakdown from the next uh, every step for example regenerate for example to shape the renewable energy and material reclaim retain and restore return recover biological resource to the biosphere share for example in use prolong the true meaning design the durability and Optimize and increase the performance efficiency of the product and the loop, the remanufacture product, recycle material, and also fertilize. In, in the pandemic situation, it is very, very clear to see in several society by using online, uh, online shopping, online uh, education, uh, webinar, and so on. And also the change, replace with uh, advanced non renewable material. Uh, apply the new technology. It is uh, just to improve. I would like to show you in detail a little a sample uh, some project in the every step. And then from the World Economic Forum, they describe about the circular economy more in comprehensive, comprehensive concept. For example, here divide into seven, seven category. Here technologies enabling circularity, regenerative food system, system level, and circular change, circular business and model, circular finance, and circular design. Take attention for here, for example, the technology enabling circularity by using digital economy and new value creation, for example. How to use the artificial intelligence, internet of things, the virtual of computing, and so on. In terms of the food system, for example, here we can pay attention to the biodiversity, you know, agricultural for the beverage, and also how to manage the uh, consumer's lifestyle. And in terms of the system level, here some uh, item we can also in connect it. Also here, some. Uh, comprehensive item we can uh, observe in every step with connected with our uh, research and for example in every field of the science and research and in connection with the uh, reducing of co2 emission i am very interested with this table because this table can describe in quantitative way how much actually every intervention or activity can reduce the co2 emission for example here in the term of the improved livestock management can reduce the emission of co2 when 17 to 69 gigaton co2 equivalent and then here also the big number regenerative crop production in agroforestry we can reduce the co2 emission up to 95 to 161 gigaton CO2 equivalent. Here also several item here equal, for example, in number nine, economy and industrial cluster informal network also big, big amount of the CO2 emission can reduce here. Circular design and construction, it is also uh, a big number. I take from the global environmental facility, uh, 20, 21 climate change mitigation through the circular economy 
when you be very interesting it is uh, maybe can uh, deep detail discussion or maybe uh, look at the this literature just example ladies and gentlemen the how about the example ratio shift to renewable energy it is a, a, a good example for for me especially because i involved this project this project is actually how to replace uh, coal by utilization of the biomass uh, pellet bio pellet in flores flores is one island in indonesia uh, part of in uh, eastern part of indonesia here very small and the transportation for the coal is very expensive here is the uh, the power plant replacing by pellet which pellet can produce by a certain uh, cultivation of the tree fast growing tree one here to here it can we can harvest and here is the nursery to prepare the re, re, recultivation of the tree what is important for me is here is already MOU between consortium small medium enterprise with uh, on state um, power or plan here on PTPLN for supply of the biomass pellet and also this project can use and can be beneficial for the people for the planting fast growing tree and after that utilization of fly ash for building material but it is noticed here that the driving factor is agreement in this project that the price and the supply amount is stated in project this is very important many uh, many cooperation uh, price in don't know the price a fluctuative when we already fix in the price so the research the development of product can develop so careful that we can reduce the efficiency the increasing the efficiency and also many many uh, research item to, to support the efficiency to utilize of the bio pilot. this is one example uh, in terms of ratio shape of the renewable energy it is also very important example in terms of the utilization waste for building the price this is waste for building for production again uh, for building material as far i know we can use up to like 80 percent that the waste of this uh, in um, converted into as the raw material for the for the new uh, we, we call the slab this is one of the component of the building the important of this innovation is the testing physical medical properties because the quality that's quality a lot of safety also here is very important factor to convince the consumer the innovation point is simple process manufacture and make sure i mean and it's strong the the car the physical properties is very strong and workability and in the time to assembly is very this is the product and we can see that here that we can use as the component building in a high-rise building and now the factory is uh, established in serang banten uh, of course it is for supply in the jakarta market and also is uh, already long time ago established at the Johor Bahru in, in Malaysia for the Singapore market. This is result number four, recycle material. And then lesson learned from the pandemic COVID-19, the change of the behavior of people, the change of behavior of the consumer can support the mitigation of the climate change. For example, here, this item is the character during the pandemic. For example, the public awareness on health increase, concern on environmental increase. There are many creativities, idea in society, innovative packaging, for example, and the change in the healthy lifestyle, functional food, uh, food online shopping, distant learning, and, and so on. By utilizing paradigma of the resort economy secular, for example, remove waste in the production supply chain leverage big data automation remote sensing and, and streaming and choose the new product we can in the new normal convert this potential change into the the prospective the uh, agenda for example how to optimize supply chain mitigate the environmental impact valorization of the bioresource for example for the food for the health for the pharmacy 
and improve the consumer health, reduce waste and food, protect consumer, and so on and so on. And also involving here to develop industry 4.0, society 5.0. I would also add about the ratio of increased performance efficiency. How about in farming? Farming, we, can, we know that uh, the biotechnology crop uh, reported uh, can also very good reduction in CO2 emission. Here is the data in several countries, the permanent full saving, here the potential, potential carbon dioxide saving here. Look through a technology which produce a certain crop which is very efficient this is one another example and when we talking about the bio based biomass in international energy i can see i think this is a good concept that uh, to, from the biomass we can use as food feed uh, a chemical material that in this process can look back the reduce the product rating the product and the recycle the material the recycle and we can use all the material for the certain product that we uh, need for the market for example because the time it is also good uh, uh, example ladies and gentlemen that uh, from the cem energy management leadership award 2006 to 2020 to uh, 2020, there are increased performance energy efficiency by implementation of the ISO 50001. It is the selected country that uh, received award. What I would like to tell the participant is here the data about the cost, uh, the cost of energy saving and the energy performance impact. And here is very important, how is the CO2 reduction performance? It is, of course, invest first to establish the energy management system, but they can pay maximally in around in one year back. And then we can uh, gain uh, several, several beneficial from this year in term of the energy performance, energy cost saving, also in CO2. This is, for example, from the petrochemical Kirche, from the Indo food, from the PLTU Indram, Indramayu, uh, Indramayu, also from the Chandrasi, also here, here, the Pupokal team, also at the PT Zeldang, it is in Pasuruan, uh, Pembangkit uh, Jawa Bali Python, and also Great Giant Pineapple. We can see that the effect, the implementation of certain standard can also contribute to the emission of CO2. The concept also in economy circular, how to make the certain renewable resource, like here, port, we can convert into several product product here, that we can also make the economically uh, assessment and maybe can the market uh, use and here in terms of the result for the extract biochemical from organic waste save the renewable energy and also save the two material of course it is uh, the question is assessment in detail about technical and economic feasibility is needed and i'm come from the standardization agency it is very important to share with you that one of the contribution of the standardization in terms of the bioeconomy is to increase the perform performance or efficiency by using certain standard and uh, say here in a certain process from the raw material here the process manufacturing in this product we can use several standard which can improve the quality not only the quality but the efficiency of course beside the performance efficiency in the product quality also the market acceptance is very important it is also for the export market and also for the domestic market. And here, uh, my last slide, but it is still we facing a certain uh, barrier, for example, the limited understanding, awareness is, uh, must, be, uh, must be built in our society, the decision maker, 
in some time the zero coral economy basis model is hard to develop because the investor still uh, still thinking about the linear economy with uh, appraisal and audit there and the limitation in quality quite personal for example therefore like a workshop like uh, this meeting is very important to make awareness to awareness and to make a link and also the another one is the operational level there are difficulty to manage the maintaining control of the process in the value gain sometimes the responsible the responsible in the certain company in the government this is not so clear maybe it is uh, uh, not not all yeah but it is uh, one of the important challenging to be uh, solved in the near future thank you very much ladies and gentlemen Pak Nugro, for your kind attention Hello. This Thank you very much, uh, Babang Prastia, for uh, comprehensive sharing about the circular economic uh, mitigation of the climate change and the uh, sustainability standard. Uh, the last one is uh, uh, could very interesting for the next topic and then the next presenter. We move to the next presenter, Dr. Eddie Wiloso, uh, Christian and uh, Karsten. Uh, we would like to introduce you to some such kind of the uh, information of the current uh, uh, activity of the life cycle assessment research and application in Indonesia. So maybe you would like to uh, know better for this uh, this uh, information. Please welcome Dr. Eddie Iswanto Wiloso. Uh, time is yours. Uh, thank you, Panu Groho. Uh, can you see my screen now? Excellent. Oh yeah. Um, thank you. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my pleasure to. I'm doing on LCA research and application in Indonesia. I think uh, uh, we have a good bridging. Uh, from the previous presentation by Professor Bambang regarding circular economy, uh, because LCA also uh, can be used as one of the key tools here yeah, to measure circularity of a product. Basically, LCA is a, a, a tools that can measure a, an impact of a product. So we can uh, express a product in terms of a product which is more sustainable, a product is um, greener uh, and uh, have a better performance in terms of uh, environmental impact. So LCA is a good tool to compare product from the point of view of environmental performance. Uh, and this can be related to a, a quality of a product uh, in which product could be more competitive or less competitive um, uh, and, and again, it is related to uh, market of a product. Um, I will start my presentation by showing this map. This is a situation in 2015, a map by uh, United Nations Environment Program, um, showing the activities of RCA communities um, around the globe. As we can see here, uh, there is a quite a significant activities in Europe and uh, America, also in Asia. We see here our neighbor countries, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, and Singapore uh, with some activities, but not much activities that we can see in Indonesia in 2015. Of course, there is a, a lot, a many development recently. Uh, there is a change right? in, in 2021. There are so many uh, activities in Indonesia, which I will share with you. Uh, at the moment, I just know uh, how it looks like uh, in 2015, and we want to see what happened in 2021. Uh, this kind of uh, mapping is important to see uh, because this can show how um, uh, a country uh, can uh, declare uh, its product, uh, which is traded globally in terms of um, uh, environmental impact. Um, 
So because there are so many country uh, interested in doing LCA, uh, then um, ISO uh, has developed an international standard, which is 14,000 series, and gave um, a definition about life cycle assessment. Basically, it is about the um, quantification of environmental impact of a product. So this is the definition uh, by ISO. And uh, the RCA uh, is applied in many different things, but I want to mention two important, in my opinion, uh, that RCA could be used for product development, that we can develop um, product which is less um, impact uh, to the environment, which is more environmentally friendly, uh, because this is more preferable to certain market, uh, particularly in uh, area with a strict uh, environmental performance uh, and environmental regulation. And this is also relating to the uh, competitiveness of a product if the product is being marketed uh, either globally or local. So um, initially in Indonesia, the driving force for applying LCA mostly because of uh, the need from buyer from the uh, advanced country uh, with strict environment uh, regulation. But uh, currently, there are also development uh, in Indonesia, as mentioned by Professor Bambang, we are in transition to circular economy. Uh, we also have a uh, uh, target to uh, zero uh, emission. Uh, most importantly, uh, government of Indonesia through the Ministry of Environment has adopted RCA as one of the criteria to uh, give a rating to the perf environment performance of a company in Indonesia. So RCA uh, nowadays is not only uh, uh, done by academia in universities or research institution, but also being um, uh, done by uh, real sector. Yeah, industries in Indonesia, uh, many of them are now doing LCA. So we need uh, some kind of support uh, in, in, from the academic um, community, uh, such as BRIN. Before going further, talking about LCA application in Indonesia, I also want to tell you about the scope. Yeah? Previously, uh, LCA is very specific application to um, assess only the environmental impact uh, the first um, LCA studies has been uh, reported uh, by uh, Coca-Cola company, a private company in the United States 50 years ago. So um, because so many uh, countries uh, doing LCA, then ISO has uh, established international standard in 1996, which is um, updated in 2006. Uh, also, uh, ISO has published environmental product declaration. This is uh, um, uh, uh, this can be used to 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 make a claim. Um, uh, uh, we know this as a uh, eco label type three. Yes. Um, uh, so we have uh, these two standard related to RCA application, but in um, research community there is an interest to go beyond environmental uh, research. Uh, they want to see, evaluate the economy aspect and social aspect using the life cycle perspective and integrate the environment, economy and social aspect into so-called life cycle sustainability analysis. So there is a growing interest now moving uh, from the environmental uh, assessment toward the sustainability uh, in Indonesia, we call it berkelanjutan. So if you want to see a, a sustainability aspect of a certain product, we should not only consider environment, economy, but also social. Uh, this is, uh, has been, uh, uh, the aim is to, to describe the sustainability, sustainability de development and SDGs. So there are quite a room for doing research in this area. Uh, because we are it, uh, is broadening the scope from environmental aspect only to economic and social. So this is quite uh, uh, complex at the moment. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, there is a leading program 
uh, adopting LCA. I already mentioned that. Uh, that is proper. This is a scheme developed by Ministry of Environment. There is also uh, eco-label type one and type two. Uh, we have in Indonesia since 2009, there is also green industry by Ministry of uh, Industry. Uh, there is other scheme uh, developed by uh, Ministry of um, Energy, Ministry of Agriculture regarding palm oil, and uh, Ministry of Environment regarding wood product forestry. So there are quite many uh, sectors uh, which has a sustainability program uh, developed by the respected uh, technical ministry in Indonesia. Uh, it means that uh, in terms of policy, uh, the government of Indonesia is quite um, um, concerned about the as sustainability aspect. Um, <clears throat> related uh, to RCA again, um, the commitment of the government has been shown by adopting several um, standards um, in RCA series, which is uh, 14,000 series, uh, about two standard uh, about LCA uh, has been adopted as standard national Indonesia in 2016 and 2017. And the last one, uh, this year, 2021, we have adopted PCR, product category rules. This is a, some kind of gui guideline to do LCA at specific sector. And uh, next year, the government uh, through a Ministry of Environment will adopt uh, environmental product declaration. This is eco label type three uh, in 2022. Why do we need to adopt this standard as a national standard? Because uh, as we have mentioned before, um, uh, Ministry of Environment has um, uh, released uh, Peraturan Menteri, yeah? Permen Nomor Satu, 20, 2021. Uh, that the government now uh, adopting LCA uh, uh, to rate uh, environmental performance of uh, uh, companies. So there are a need yeah, from the uh, technical uh, ministry and uh, real sectors to have support yeah? because LCA is quite new in Indonesia. I think uh, Brin as a, a research institution uh, could pay, play a role uh, in providing uh, research uh, to fill the gaps uh, to support the this development. Uh, so we come to a two key, key question uh, in which to understand the situation, uh, we need to know uh, how RCA has been utilized in Indonesia, uh, which research areas, which commodity has been studied. And we also want to know who does what about LCA research in Indonesia, affiliation, universities and research institution, because we, we have to map this uh, data before uh, continuing uh, doing research on LCA. And uh, having said that, uh, I want to also uh, uh, say a little bit about BRIN, how BRIN could play a role in this development, uh, how BRIN could support LCA, uh, Research and Development in Indonesia, because as uh, has been mentioned uh, previously by Pak Mego, that there is a critical mass and quite interest yeah, uh, from uh, a researcher from BPPT and also LIPI, uh, quite a number of people uh, having interest in this area. And I think uh, it's about time to identify research gaps and uh, bring to develop referred programs uh, in this direction to support uh, development uh, in the implementation of RCA in Indonesia. Uh, the next, uh, I want to share with you the uh, uh, quite uh, five years ago, we have uh, published these uh, papers uh, in a good journal, yeah, International Journal of Life Cycle Assessment. This is a good journal in the area. And this is written by a colleague from Indonesian Life Cycle Assessment Network. There are many of us, around 15, uh, to um, do research on the status of LCA in Indonesia in 2019. Yeah? So this is uh, three years uh, back. 
And uh, uh, the research is uh, reviewing uh, uh, scientific publication about RCA in Indonesia, uh, authored by uh, uh, co-author affiliated with Indonesia, and uh, uh, in the last 20 years, so uh, between 96 to 2016, 20 years, yeah, 20 years back. So the search criteria is we are using a keyword such as life cycle assessment, life cycle costing, life cycle sustainability analysis, life cycle inventory, and life cycle impact assessment, and Indonesia. Uh, so we want to capture how uh, LCA research being done in Indonesia using this keyword in the abstract and the title. Uh, we are using, um, sorry, uh, we are using a database, Web of Science and Scopus Index, and we come up with more than 100 uh, journal articles. So we don't, we exclude uh, um, proceeding seminars, yeah? only journal in referred journal indexed by Web of Science and Scopus. Uh, we came up with more than 100 records and we evaluate information, we extract information from uh, these uh, records. And uh, this is a uh, very interesting information uh, that uh, we find out that um, we also do similar uh, search on neighboring countries in Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, and other countries in Asian, Asian region. And a very interesting um, finding that uh, Indonesia ranked four, yeah? Uh, after Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. This is to my surprise that we are uh, came after Singapore because there are so many things that we can say about Indonesia because we have so many commodities compared to Singapore. Uh, and we evaluate why is this happening. Uh, we come up with the conclusion that uh, uh, the publication from Indonesia is uh, only small number because uh, lack of awareness. We don't recognize the importance of LCA at the time. Uh, uh, consequently, consequently, we don't have a capacity to do LCA. Uh, not many uh, course being offered in universities at the time. And also a lack of database because uh, doing LCA, we have to use a proper life cycle uh, database, uh, which is uh, proper uh, for use in the tropical countries such as Indonesia. Mostly we borrow data from uh, uh, advanced countries uh, with the cold climate, which is quite different in terms of characteristic with uh, Indonesian case. So there are quite uh, uh, challenges yeah, uh, doing LCA in Indonesia uh, development that we have to um, uh, 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 solve. Uh, the second uh, information that uh, publication uh, by years is also not very good. Yeah, uh, The first uh, paper appears in 96, and uh, there is uh, interesting development starting 2010. Uh, there is uh, quite interest in Indonesia by showing this uh, increasing trend. But the driving force to do RCA, uh, when uh, we look further, mostly uh, from uh, people or students uh, doing a PhD abroad. Yeah? Uh, so the driver is not from uh, internal in Indonesia, but rather from uh, other countries. Uh, so, but uh, I believe if we do uh, explore again in the recent, there will be more surprising um, positive uh, improvement, I believe, uh, in Indonesia will uh, has more publication uh, in the current last five years. And uh, if you want to see who do, who, uh, which affiliation doing research on LCA, as you can see here, mostly from universities such as Syah Kuala, uh, ITB, UGM, IPB, uh, UPH, uh, and other uh, UP, yes. Uh, there is not many from uh, research center actually, uh, there is one here, uh, LIPI. Uh, actually, there is uh, also uh, from BPPT, yeah? uh, but a colleague from BPPT did not uh, put the 
affiliation, uh, BPPT affiliation. So uh, the, the uh, web, uh, the, the index system does not recognize. Um, actually, there is uh, from BPPT, for example, I should point out this is a, 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 a publication by Pa Anugrah Vidyanto, yeah, about electricity uh, RCA uh, in Japan and Indonesia, but it does not appear in the year because uh, Pa Anugrah did not uh, use a BPPT as a, a affiliation. Yeah, uh, in terms of uh, type of commodities and sectors uh, which is uh, of interest. Uh, by researcher in Indonesia, as we can see here, energy, uh, biodiesel, uh, palm oil. Yeah? I think this is uh, quite. Uh, we already know uh, Jatrofa also. Um, uh, uh, we also do uh, research some research on rice, uh, biomass, uh, and agriculture because we are still uh, very um, uh, intensive in doing agriculture. Uh, also about building and concrete. So quite a uh, broad spectrum in terms of commodity and uh, uh, sectors uh, of interest uh, for researchers doing LCA in Indonesia. So I think this is my last uh, uh, slide. Uh, I, I tried to conclude. Uh, I already mentioned the type of product of interest on LCA studies in Indonesia. We also has indicated that we still have a low number of publication uh, because of reason that has been explained. Uh, the third, um, for future improvement, uh, we recommend that Indonesia should focus on capacity building. Uh, we need to do more research on RCA and we have to uh, uh, develop national database, which is uh, um, specific for Indonesian case yeah, as tropical countries. We cannot borrow a uh, um, uh, database uh, uh, from uh, uh, cold climate countries uh, in the north, yeah, uh, because we introduce uh, uh, error, uh, uncertainty in that regard. Um, having said that, um, I would just want to point out uh, that uh, hopefully brain can play a key role in the future development uh, that we do research and develop uh, database uh, so we can also um, increase number of articles because in brain we uh, has a quite a good number of um, uh, critical mass um, uh, that uh, can develop uh, these things. Uh, last, I don't want to um, explain this uh, because of time, but uh, I think uh, it is important to look at the lesson learned from our neighbors. Thailand is very progressive on this uh, early in 1990. Uh, perhaps we could use uh, the uh, roadmap of Thailand uh, uh, for us to, to follow. Uh, it's not, uh, not bad to, to see uh, how uh, our neighbor countries uh, to develop policy. I think that is my presentation, Pak Nugroho. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pak Edi. Uh, for the Scopus uh, Index from BPPT, I think not BPPT, you have to change the keyword to agents. Agency for Assessment and Application of Technology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, okay, thank you very much, uh, Pak Edi Wiloso, uh, Senior Researchers in the Life Cycle Assessment for, from Brin. Nice and insightful presentation on the LCA Research and Application in Indonesia. Very interesting updated information about the current situation of the LCA activities in Indonesia. Now we move to our distinguished uh, lecture from Berlin, Germany, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kasten, I think uh, you, you're not, uh, you're very uh, eager to present your uh, current activities in Berlin, in Germany, and also want to develop some such kind of the collaboration with Indonesia. Please welcome uh, Mr. Kasten for your presentation. Uh, time is yours. Yeah, thanks a lot. Let's uh, switch it to the presentation mode. Um... Hopefully in a second. Um, yeah, uh, thanks uh, first of all uh, for having us uh, here um, because I think this is a really valuable uh, event uh, actually. And uh, we already had some uh, really good presentations uh, before 
um, which are really helpful also to, to link with, with our um, work here. Um, we are doing on uh, LCA. Our background uh, is a technology institute working in, in the mi microelectronics uh, domain. And uh, Professor Bamang, you, you have already shown um, the, the important, importance of certain sectors. So the agricultural sector, the construction sector, um, they, they are dominating. I, I would say it's, well, r rather on, on a global level uh, even. Uh, well, our background is then on electronics, which is rather a minor contributor to the overall um, environmental impacts, um, I would say. Um, but nevertheless, this is the field where we are working. Uh, so we try our best uh, to reduce uh, then the environmental impacts of this uh, sector further. And I hope we can uh, show you a bit of, um, let's say, the, the hotspots in, in, in this sector and, and what is uh, uh, observed here in, in terms of um, environmental impacts uh, as well. So, well, we are, we are working um, on uh, microelectronics packaging, system integration, uh, making things uh, smaller, uh, miniaturize uh, things. So this is what keeps uh, around about uh, 300 technologists at our institute uh, busy day in, uh, day out. But for quite a while, we have an environmental department, an environmental working group at the institute where more than 20 researchers work on uh, sustainability aspects of electronics uh, so and, and that ranges uh, from whole networks and infrastructure so the telecom infrastructure um, also the application of ICT for doing good or bad on, on other systems um, the topic of circular design of devices I will come to that uh, in, in a second and uh, also here Professor Bamang you already provided good insights on uh, what the circular economy is all about and you know, which numerous facets to to um, consider here um, recycling of materials so e-waste this is a certain topic for us uh, which we need to keep in mind um, as well um, and then we are pretty closely linked um, to the legislation and to the policy processes uh, over here in, in europe as well um, and i will pick out an example how this works then in the second part of uh, my talk. So when, when talking uh, then about um, microelectronics, we, we are frequently talking about circular design, uh, making things uh, smaller, but also modular, for example. This here is now an example from a European project we've been involved in, uh, a digital voice recorder, which is still somehow popular among lawyers and for use in hospitals and by journalists uh, for keeping track of interviews and so. Um, and the idea here was uh, then to bring into such kind of sm rather small miniaturized device some kind of modularity to allow for repairability, also to allow for reuse of certain parts and components. And uh, that's why, why you see then here, um, in other devices or in prior prior generations, uh, you would have uh, seen this here as a mono printed circuit board. And um, now we introduced here some modular building blocks which can be exchanged, which potentially also can be uh, reused. Another example is this kind of um, laptop or mobile computing device, um, which uh, is a development of a small Irish uh, company. And they tried also to consider here as many circular design aspects um, as possible. So that ranges then from uh, standard interfaces, also interfaces which rather refer still to a bit more outdated technology uh, when it comes here to, to VGA ports, Ethernet, okay, if, if it's a computer and uh, not only a tablet, uh, then that makes definitely sense. Uh, so to make it compatible with other parts and devices, um, overall repairability, they also took care of um, manufacturing processes which uh, can be applied uh, in Europe um, in rather low-tech environments also, what we call fab labs. Uh, so laboratories equipped or, or workshops equipped uh, with rather low-tech uh, CNC milling machines. Um, Etc., so that uh, certain parts uh, can do not need to be done 
really uh, in a huge high-tech uh, facility. Um, this was also the idea to bring back part of the manufacturing uh, then uh, maybe to some of the European uh, countries here. Exchangeable covers, um, replaceability of the battery, etc. So, and in that sense, you can, in, in, in such kind of um, research and development project, you really can implement a lot of the circular design thinking, which was also pointed out by uh, Professor Bannan before. So the, the various strategies uh, to go for um, a better circular economy. But actually, this comes at a certain price also. It doesn't come for free. And the message should not be do as much circularity as possible because it might bounce back at, at a certain point. Um, just to, to show it here in, in a simple way, uh, down here, we, we have uh, the, um, what we call here, the D4R tablet. And on top of it, an iPad. So, and, and already here you see from the material consumption for this device, uh, well, you have much less material in the iPad than in this tablet, desktop, mobile computer. Yeah, and um, this gives you all already some insights. Um, well, if uh, then this uh, computer isn't used really for much longer, um, if the lifetime isn't extended by being compatible, by being repairable, uh, by being upgradable um, also potentially, which the iPad is not, um, then uh, you will have here additional environmental impacts uh, which will not pay back uh, over the long term. And also for that, then uh, life cycle assessments are really important and uh, this is done then. For example, for, for many years now um, by Apple and uh, we are supporting them also uh, in, in these activities um, by doing the review of uh, their life cycle assessment studies. Uh, they are doing now since the, the first generation of, uh, of the iPhone, um, you'll find our role then also described in the, uh, the environmental responsibility report. So that's why I'm not breaching any confidentiality agreement uh, here. Um, but what, what is really interesting then to see is uh, that uh, this life cycle assessment approach uh, is not just um, implemented to, to crunch the numbers, to come to some kind of nice environmental product declarations or so, um, but uh, really uh, to see how this transfers then also in design and manufacturing changes. Because LCA should always be understood as some kind of tool to make things better, to figure out what to do, and then also to prove that it is better in the end. So and um, this is uh, something which is uh, definitely implemented by Apple, but um, indeed in recent years, increasingly also by numerous other um, companies. I, I really see in the last uh, two or three years, uh, that there's a massive growth in, in interest in, it's, it's a bit less life cycle assessment. It's a bit more on carbon footprinting. So it's uh, pretty clear. Uh, the climate debate is uh, driving this uh, currently pretty much. Uh, so there, there's a lot of intention on uh, carbon footprinting. And this is here what um, where we have been involved in another project for an Austrian company. They are uh, producing inverters for photovoltaic systems, actually. And uh, they also for the first time uh, then implemented um, a life cycle assessment uh, on their products, um, really also um, to figure out what to do next. So how to improve things, how to improve uh, the products actually. Um, briefly sticking to this, and what you frequently see in, the, in, in high tech industries um, is uh, then uh, that uh, you, this company is, is called Froners, um, and, and they um, assemble and build the devices, designs made by them of, uh, of these inverters. Um, but uh, what they do um, in the Austrian facilities is only 2% of the overall carbon footprint. Um, that's much more than electricity losses during usage. Um, but even more, and that's what I would like to point out here, um, then 66% uh, on the components they are building into their uh, inverters. 
So if, if they look only at, at their own manufacturing facility and try to improve everything in terms of processes, um, power consumption, power sources, etc., uh, they have only this playing field here of, of uh, two percent of uh, impacts actually. So and what uh, matters much more is then what can they do about these sixty-six percent here? And another thing is here. Um, if you calculate in then proper recycling, you get some, some credits back. So recycling is then also important to do that um, properly. Um, but this um, carbon footprint profile here is very typical also for a high-tech product, for a product from the electronics industry through re proper recycling. You don't get back that much, actually, because a lot of uh, the energy, a lot of the impacts is really then also in the electronics components, typically um, slightly different with this product. We'll see it in a second. Um, so in, and in, in that sense, um, implement an excellent recycling, no way. Um, uh, that's what you definitely should do. Um, but uh, to keep Alive, these 66% here once invested in environmental impacts uh, through lifetime extension and through repairability uh, is uh, extremely important. Yeah, so these 66%, um, then for this company, it's really the challenge. Uh, their product, uh, these inverters are made of several hundred uh, components. Um, but the nice thing, and that's what you can figure out with LCA, is uh, then it comes down to few individual entries in, in the end. Um, so in this case, um, for, for cooling purposes, uh, also um, thermal management, uh, there's a lot of um, aluminum uh, here in, in this product uh, where the majority of the impact goes to They have also a certain amount of uh, pet plastics or that then it's rather the coils uh, for energy uh, transmission. So, and in that sense, life cycle assessment approaches help you really to identify to figure out what what matters uh, here in such kind of, of product and then you can really focus your efforts on what to improve with which uh, suppliers to talk uh, where to improve maybe also the design to, to bring down um, the environmental impact maybe also where rather to use recycled material so for the aluminum here for example to source dedicated recycled aluminum uh, would be a way forward here to, to bring down the overall uh, carbon footprint. And, and th that would be much, much more than what you can do in your individual own production facility here, these uh, 2% uh, in comparison. So, but that means you need to talk to the supply chain. Uh, and here it starts to be really then a global issue um, because th then you have to uh, inquire with a supplier. So you get a, from your supplier kind of product well, and then you want to calculate uh, your scope three emissions. I need the data from my supplier. So th this is uh, then the request. And, and then the supplier has to start here. Okay, my scope one, two, and three emissions are then your scope three emissions. So and uh, that's the way how the communication uh, then has to go here, actually. And we have here also currently a project uh, going on on the national uh, level exactly to do that to figure out where are the hotspots and uh, we are trying this out now with the electronics industry um, but this is then frequently also that uh, suppliers from uh, abroad will play a role so we, we still have to, to figure out uh, which suppliers then for, for these pilot companies we have in mind here. Let's come to another example. Um, how is LCA used in policy currently? Um, and here we are currently involved in uh, developing the eco design legislation uh, on mobile phones, uh, cordless phones, uh, tablets. Um, and here the, the legislator is, is doing or is contracting then also some kind of LCA. So here you see the well environmental Im indicators, slightly different than what's typically used in, in LCA, um, but for, for a bit more historic reasons. Um, and what they asked then contractors to do, and in this case it was us, uh, to figure out for some archetypes of mobile phones um, and the whole European market, what are the impacts uh, and how much does this uh, contribute 
to the overall EU totals. So these numbers now look, look small. Actually, um, this is now for the uh, product group um, mobile phones, tablets. Actually, and when, when it comes to total energy, it's 0.2% of the total European energy consumption, EU uh, energy consumption, uh, what goes into these devices, but it's the use phase and uh, even more the production phase. So most of this actually happens outside uh, the EU as uh, we, we get most of the electronics uh, components then from uh, abroad as well. Um, so, but in that uh, sense, uh, the European Union is also tackling even these, let's say, minor contributors to the overall environmental impacts. Um, and it's currently very important to develop here some legislation uh, on these uh, mobile devices. Theoretically, how it should work, how this kind of legislation uh, works. Um, so the legislator looks at what kind of um, design options you have to, to improve a kind of product. And uh, the better you make your product with certain design options, uh, the further down goes uh, the environmental impact here, it's energy consumption. But this comes at a certain price. So certain things will pay off for, for the end user and the orange one here is then the cost curve uh, for the end user. And uh, the intention of the European Commission uh, is, is really to find this point number two here, the least life cycle costs. So where are the environmental impacts still going down? And what is uh, the lowest cost point then for the end consumer? And that's what they try to figure out and find out um, in such kind of um, eco-design product group uh, studies. Um, and that meant, first of all, numerous design options to be considered. Here you, you see all the design options uh, or strategies uh, from a, a circular economy perspective also. Uh, we identified which could enhance the environmental performance um, of uh, these kinds of devices. And that's what we um, plotted then uh, on such kind uh, of curve. That's how it should look in, in theory, what uh, the legislator thought of how it uh, could look like. And this is now how it looks uh, in practice uh, for certain types of, uh, of smartphones, so for, for mainstream. Uh, smartphones. Uh, so implementing these are the various design options implemented one by one on top of each other. But what we have seen here now is, well, blue curve as intended, environmental impacts are going down. Otherwise, it doesn't uh, count as an environmental design options anyhow. Um, but the cost curve also going down and then rather staying on, on a low level. So, which means uh, here the legislator then also sees, uh, okay, um, all these design options uh, still qualify here for further uh, improvements uh, for being regulated, um, actually. And uh, as our point of reference was here, the year per use, um, it's pretty clear all circular economy approaches, which result in a longer product lifetime really saves cost for the end consumer uh, because then he hasn't uh, to, or he or she has not to buy a new device, but can uh, still further continue using the already existing one. So from a cost perspective, this is uh, definitely then um, yeah, something uh, which keeps overall life cycle costs uh, down. So, and in that sense, uh, this is the way the uh, regulator and policy is thinking uh, currently, which leads by looking at the methodology to rather very stringent minimum requirements, most likely uh, in the near term future. So the, the regulation as such um, on, on these kinds of devices, which I just now picked out as an example, is uh, still a uh, work in progress. Um, but uh, we expect here rather very ambitious minimum requirements and on top of that, maybe some further scoring or so. Um, Let's come to, to the conclusions uh, here. Um, life cycle approaches are broadly followed by industry and policy currently. That's what, what we see here. Um, and they are actually uh, a sound tool to, to set priorities, right? And to guide design decisions, not to implement each and everything you can think of, uh, but really to be uh, assured what really makes sense from an environmental uh, side, because you can overdo things also. Um, in a high-tech sector in particular, um, supply chain interaction is, is needed pretty much 
uh, to get the analysis right because you depend on uh, what, what you get from your suppliers uh, and how they produce and manufacture parts and components. Um, and uh, what we currently see is really a, a very strong trend towards scope three coverage. So supply chain emission coverage uh, to reach then climate neutrality targets, again, on the policy level, but also on the individual company level. So this brings me to the end of my talk and next would be then Christian. Yes, um, thank you, Carsten. Um, good morning from Germany and uh, Slamat Siang uh, to Indonesia. Um, so let's see, can I take, okay. Yes, um, please. Uh, so in discussing what topics might be interesting to present, uh, Nugoho, we talked about polymers, uh, batteries, um, and uh, charging stations, which, uh, which are also covered by activities by BPVT, also BRIN. So um, I picked out three topics to briefly introduce here that uh, we are working on or that we have also interest in uh, working with more. So on the left um, is uh, polymers recycling. So we had a large European project uh, that was running for four years recently concluded. It's called uh, Police and deals with uh, recycling of polymers from high-tech applications, uh, electronic equipment mostly, and uh, using life cycle assessment to determine environmental impacts of, uh, of the uh, plastics recycling activities. Um, then batteries are, of course, becoming ever more relevant uh, uh, in our current time, um, all types of uh, green technologies, um, green transport, etc., all use uh, batteries. And of course, uh, in the ICT sector with uh, smartphones, tablets, notebooks, but also IoT and other applications, batteries will uh, become more and more relevant. And um, one, one such example is um, we, I bring a few slides from a a small company in Germany called Suncrafter. Um, they manufacture mobile uh, photovoltaics charging stations um, using um, uh, already used um, photovoltaic uh, panels. And these of course also include batteries. So the question of recycling and what to do at the end of life with these devices is uh, also relevant here. Um, so on the next slide, um, this looks a little complex. This is on polymer recycling. Uh, so this is uh, one activity that we had in this uh, larger project. And what I want you to see is um, uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the top here, we have this little diagram. It's a little bit too small to read, um, but what it shows is the material flow. So on the left, you have um, the input of one ton um, of waste uh, electronic household waste, um, not household waste, uh, large uh, large household appliances, which is, for example, refrigerators or air conditioners, uh, washing machines, uh, dishwashers, etc. Um, so, in one ton of such equipment, you have, of course, a lot of uh, metals. Uh, in washing machines, you have concrete um, and other materials, um, but also plastics. So. Uh, it turns out that in around one ton of these large household devices, you have more than 200 kilograms of uh, plastics. Um, and of course, uh, recycling activities have always been focused on uh, the material content, uh, the metal content. So the metal content is where you get uh, valuable materials out. You can get um, iron and copper and from printed circuit boards, also gold, etc. So this is where the value um, uh, for recycling uh, uh, facility is, um, but uh, the content of plastics is, like I said, more than 200 uh, kilograms per one ton. Um, and we all know that uh, plastics are uh, in our society, as also mentioned by the previous speakers, an increasing issue. So recyclability of the plastics is becoming more relevant. Um, and this project uh, had a look at how can we recycle more of the plastic content uh, of these waste um, electronic equipment. Um, if we look at the lower diagram, 
they can see that there's different types of plastic, for example, ABS or HIPS, which is high, high impact polystyrol. You have uh, PP, which is uh, polypropylene, which is filled and unfilled. So they either add filler materials or not. And then there's other materials like PVC, for example. And um, what this project uh, looked at is um, some of these plastics are um, incompatible during recycling. So what that means is uh, usually these devices are uh, shredded. So they're shredded into small bits and uh, then the different waste streams are separated. So you have metal waste streams, magnetic metal, non-magnetic metals, uh, and you also have like the light shredding fraction, which is uh, contains diff all different types of plastics. And the recycling operator has the challenge to need to separate those plastics from another to be able to properly properly uh, recycle them. Otherwise, some kind of plastics um, that cannot be separated from each other are lost and cannot be recycled. So where does life cycle assessment actually come into play here? The idea of this project was um, to, to put more effort into sorting devices before shredding them. So the idea is different types of devices have different types of plastics. And if you sort the de devices before you shred them, you also sort the plastics with them. Um, so life cycle assessment plays a role here, as you can see in the diagram, in two different places. So we look at the process. Um, we compare the conventional recycling process, which is, like I said, uh, basically shredding all kinds of uh, different devices uh, in the same shredder and then trying to separate uh, plastics or the clustered recycling approach, which means we cluster different types of large household devices into groups uh, before then treating them separately. That's the first comparative LCA, comparing the conventional recycling approach with a clustered recycling approach. Uh, and the second part is on the right side in the diagram there uh, where it says product. Um, that's where we look at um, the actual product of recycling, uh, which is, well, PCR plastics, post-consumer recycled plastics, uh, compared to virgin plastics for the use in, uh, in new products. Um, so what is the scope for such an assessment? In this case, uh, the scope is the WE, which is waste, uh, electric and electronic equipment, uh, plastics, a process recycling chain. So there's a simplified diagram here. Um, and in this project, we work together with uh, companies um, that are active in the recycling process chain that do this recycling uh, and also um, com companies that um, take care of compounding. Um, but let, let's see, let's take a look at this diagram. So first we have collected, uh, sorry, uh, previous slide. Um, thanks. Uh, so the collected waste stream, LHA, large household devices, and there's pre-processing. Uh, where some parts are separated from the devices. Um, uh, some, uh, yeah, for example, oil from motors needs to be separated, etc. Uh, then it's also shredding. After the shredding, there's uh, one fraction, output fraction from the shredder, which is plastic rich fractions from which then uh, impurities are removed. Um, and then the mixed plastic flakes need to be separated into uh, individual plastic waste streams, so separating polypropylene from ABS, etc. So that's plastic sorting. And in the last step, when you want to make uh, new plastics, you use a part recycled plastic. Uh, you always have to add in a, a little bit of virgin plastics and fillers and compounding is basically the step where you create uh, the new plastic. That's the scope. Um, so we move to the next slide. What are the results when we uh, first of all, look at the recycling rates uh, for the different clustering strategies. So in this diagram, you see um, if you only have one cluster, so you do not separate different, um, different devices before shredding, uh, per one kilo, uh, per one ton um, of waste devices, you can only get back uh, less than 20 kilograms of plastics, and that's only polypropylene. Now, if you, if you do separate the different types of devices before shredding, you can get a lot more plastics back, as you can see in the diagram. So if you form two or three clusters of different types of devices, then suddenly you can also uh, recover 
uh, in this case, filled polypropylene as well as high impact polystyrol and uh, ABS plastic. So the amount of plastic you can get back by applying this new strategy is a lot higher. Um, now on the next diagram, if you thank you, um, that is the result of the life cycle assessment um, of these different uh, recycling strategies. And you can see that if you uh, if you have only one cluster and you don't separate devices, then there's uh, on top you see virgin production um, of plastics has a high impact. Now, if we recover a lot more plastic, as is shown in the two uh, two columns on the right, uh, then you have a far reduced um, environmental impact associated with the virgin production of uh, plastics, uh, but you have a lot higher uh, energy and electricity consumption uh, for the additional effort to, uh, to pre-process devices. But all in all, you can see that the total environmental impact here measured with the recipe method uh, is reduced uh, overall uh, by uh, up to 23%. And uh, on the next slide, we also had a look at um, a, uh, the embedded burden of recycled plastics per one kilogram of material. Um, so if you look at these bars, you can see on the very left, you have ABS uh, as a single use plastic. Um, and the largest environmental impact here is associated with the virgin production of plastic, and then later with the end of life incineration of uh, waste plastic. The column right next to it is ABS in a circular economy. So if you uh, recover ABS, then of course, due to allocation, um, you still have uh, an impact of virgin production, but uh, the amount of ABS that is lost and that is incinerated is a lot lower. So the environmental uh, impact associated with that is also a lot lower uh, and the impact of recycling is comparatively small so overall you have a net benefit and that same logic also applies to uh, polystyrol um, polypropylene uh, and other plastics so the potential environmental impact of recycled plastic is reduced by 27 to up to 38 percent compared to single use plastics and uh, that is uh, that is um, all uh, that I can uh, report today in this short time from this project. We also had um, a look at other aspects of uh, recycling of plastics, such as uh, preservation of material quality, which is uh, highly relevant. Uh, but due to time constraints, um, I cannot go into detail with that. And that brings me to the second part of the presentation, uh, which is about um, um, microcharging stations and battery recycling. Um, so this is, a, like I said, a small company in Germany that built these um, micro um, mobile PV charging stations where they used, uh, uh, where they where they employ used uh, PV panels, um, add on batteries, uh, add on some um, intelligence so uh, that they can be uh, communicated with, and uh, the purpose is that you. Um, that you put them up all over a city, that's the idea, uh, and they provide basically green uh, energy. So here you have some technical information. Um, you have a peak, peak wattage of uh, 400 uh, watts of a second life PV module. There's a battery system included. Um, so when there's sunshine, obviously it starts charging the internal battery. And then you as a, a user of a scooter or motorbike motor, um, you can go and uh, use the system to charge uh, with green energy. So it uses a battery, which is either a lead acid battery or lithium ion battery. Uh, it is of course water and dust proof with an IP certification. Uh, it weighs 60 to 90 kilograms. Uh, the weight can be increased for up to 600 kilograms. So it's actually a solid, solid structure. On the next slide, uh, you can see what the idea is. So this is a map of, um, Berlin here, um, and the idea is, of course, that you could have these uh, mobile charging stations all over a city, and uh, users of electric mobility, small electric mobility vehicles, uh, can charge anywhere using an using an app. Uh, and on the next slide, um, there's some examples of projects that are already implemented in Berlin and in other cities. Um, so this is uh, pilot applications uh, that are uh, currently being tested. 
And I'm showing you this because uh, we think it's a, it's a very interesting company with a very interesting uh, concept. We would like to work with them uh, in the future. And uh, we're wondering if this is, uh, could also be of interest for Indonesia. So that's the overall uh, vision. You have uh, various benefits. Um, so you reduce the carbon footprint of micromobility applications and uh, I know that in Indonesia you have um, on the on the streets a lot of uh, motorbikes and uh, of course there's also a drive to electrify those and something like this could be uh, could be uh, could be an interesting um, factor for a sustainable city like Jakarta for example okay um, on the next page the question is of course how about then the impacts of the battery uh, production and recycling. Um, of course, LCA can be uh, used as a tool um, here as well. Uh, this is from a project we did a few years ago. This is not specific for SunCrafter in any way, uh, but this is a uh, life cycle impact assessment that we did for, for a, uh, let, let's say, a smaller battery, a battery cell that can be used in notebooks, tablets, etc. But the chemistry used here is uh, comparable to lithium ion batteries and other applications as well. So we have a product system uh, looking at the entire production of the battery from material extraction, etc. This is very typical for an LCA. Um, you all know this. Uh, in the end of life, uh, we looked at the collection uh, of devices, the separation of the battery from devices, the sorting of batteries compared um, to, to individual battery types, such as nic uh, nickel metal hydride batteries, lithium ion batteries, et cetera. Then you have recycling steps and you uh, recover different materials such as cobalt, copper. And nowadays recycling processes can also uh, recover other mm, metals like uh, nickel, uh, manganese, et cetera. But in this project, we assumed you get uh, uh, secondary cobalt and copper in the end of the recycling process and for that in the life cycle assessment you can give credits this is an overview um, so as i just said uh, collection sorting and the actual material recovery in in europe is most of the time a mix of pyro and hydrometallurgical process steps um, you cover cobalt copper nickel mostly uh, in current uh, recycling processes, you do not recover lithium, iron, aluminum, graphite, and uh, the organic substances like the electrolyte. Um, um, I've listed a few examples on the lower right of recycling operators in, in Europe, like uh, Umicore in Belgium, Acurec in Germany, uh, Recopule in, Fr in France. And um, well, the recovery uh, rate of the product is basically um, the product of the metal content in the battery, the collection rate, which is never 100%, um, the sorting rate, uh, which is also not 100%, and then the process efficiency of the material uh, recovery process. Um, so on the next slide, there's an example of a uh, result. So this is only for the global warming potential. Uh, the majority of impacts of the battery are with the production. Um, and you get a credit uh, due to recovery of materials of uh, minus 4% in this case. Please note that the use phase is not included here because the use phase is excluded from the scope as the use phase energy uh, consumption is associated with the device in which the battery is used and not with the battery itself. Um, this is also only the result for global warming potential. We also have results for abiotic resource depletion and so on, where the credit um, that you get at the end of life for recovery of materials is also a lot higher, like around 20%. Okay. Um, the last slide here, I mentioned uh, the collection of batteries. And this is from another project that we did, which shows the importance of closing the loop for small batteries. So what you see on the left is basically what is what uh, what was placed on the market in Europe in 2017. Um, and you see that the largest amount is here PB based batteries, so lead acid batteries. You have all kinds of other batteries, lithium primary, lithium rechargeable batteries, etc. So these are put on the market in the EU 28 was uh, 4.126 kilotons of batteries in 2017. 
Then in the central block, that's the total battery stock in the EU 28, uh, which is basically Hello, Christian. I think it's your, your screen is freezing. Yeah. Yeah. Seems as if he dropped out, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you would like to continue his presentation. <laughs> okay, then let me continue. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see. Uh, luckily, he's uh, almost at the end of- Last, uh, last, last slide. Uh, <laughs> All right, here, here you see just uh, the, the summary, which I haven't seen myself uh, before, so the, therefore, um, well, um, he focused here on the, on the plastics uh, recycling, which is uh, increasingly important um, currently here, and where a lot of uh, companies uh, focus effort currently on uh, how to um, improve recycling rates, how to uh, incorporate uh, then plastics also in new devices. So, um, um, uh, making use of secondary uh, plastics uh, then for new products such as uh, household appliances is, a, is an extremely challenging uh, process also and uh, cannot happen overnight. So this is a longer phase in process actually. Um, LCA can help here to get uh, the, the picture right and to, to set the priority uh, right. And um, on the other hand, uh, then the topic of uh, batteries um, actually Enormously growing market, uh, highly important for the um, uh, transition also of the mobility sector towards more uh, electrical vehicles uh, in any way. And here, this one example of uh, Suncrafter uh, showed pretty well how solutions could, like, could look like in, in an urban context, having in mind also circularity aspects, namely the... Um, PV model uh, modules uh, coming back from the market, which might need to be uh, refurbished, uh, plus maybe also a second use of uh, some mobile batteries then to be used um, as stationary batteries uh, here to um, store uh, power for a while uh, until you charge scooters or, or whatever. So, and uh, of course, linked to that uh, is then the uh, recycling uh, topic uh, at the at the final end of the life after hopefully numerous product life cycles uh, for the same module battery whatever um, you of course still have to give uh, recycling some thought um, and here uh, LCA could also help uh, to uh, set the strategy right to identify also uh, on on which. Uh, materials to be recovered uh, you need to focus uh, so in, in, in that sense uh, as a uh, can guide your uh, uh, let, let me come back to, to the point uh, of policy as well as of uh, enterprise and and business model uh, directions uh, you want to follow okay that's it thank you carsten for stepping in uh, i <laughs> i was uh, kicked out of the meeting <laughs> thanks for taking over no problem Thank you, okay. Karsten, for nice uh, conclusion. And thank you, Christian, uh, for your presentation. It's uh, very nice and very interesting about the uh, mobile PV charging station for, for micro mobility application. I think it's very uh, applicable in Indonesia for the near future. OK, we move to the next last uh, presenter, uh, Ms. Uh, Ernie Sukocho. It's not, he's very ready to give a excellent presentation for the last presenter for today before we have a discussion. Please welcome uh, Buerni, time's yours. Display, display setting, I think you have to change. Yeah. Yes, click that one. Uh, Can you hear me? Okay, good, good, excellent. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Honorable Mr. Deputy, Mr. Pengo Pantinandito, uh, Honorable All Speaker and Moderator, and also all participants, Bapak Ibu Sivitas Brin. 
yang saya banggakan. Uh, I hope I still have your attention in the last session of this webinar series. And uh, it's my pleasure for me to join this uh, workshop with expert in SCA from different institution. Uh, as the previous presenters has already give a good presentation, I try to give uh, some cases in Indonesia. Okay, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Ernie Sukocho. I specialize in material science, especially in polymer. But uh, for the past year, I'm involved in management mostly. But now I'm back as a research researchers with uh, Pak Nugroho and team. Well, uh, for the next 15 minutes, I'll be explaining about e plastic waste management as a challenge and opportunity in Indonesia. And I hope after this webinar, we can continue with uh, some project collaboration based on the challenge and opportunity in Indonesia, surely. Okay. Why uh, it is uh, um, important? Uh, US management, as uh, mentioned previously, covered by SDG in point three, six, eight, eleven, twelve, and 14. As you know, it was electrical and electronic equipment, or uh, we call it V triple E, or simply E waste, have been gaining attention around the world due to their rapid generation and potential economic values. The emerging issue related to waste, electrical, and electronic equipment have become one of the major environmental concern worldwide. Rapid innovation and fast economic development have generated a large market for electronic and electrical product. However, the accelerated growth of electronic and electrical product is not in line with the current innovation of recycling facility as well as the recycling rate, which result in high quantity of e-waste. Uh, the consumption of uh, electrical and electronic equipment is strongly linked to widespread uh, global economic development. And we know that uh, e-waste is the fastest growing waste on the planet with annual growth rate uh, about 3 until 4%. And only 15% of e-waste is recycled by plastic. It's counting uh, for almost 20%. Uh, and how is our condition in Indonesia? It is estimated that US generation worldwide will reach uh, 53.6 million ton per annum by 2021. And it's a of 7.3 kilogram per capita. And the point is only 74.4% is properly documented and recycled, which means that 82.5% 82, uh, of global e-waste are not documented. And we, Indonesia, are included in this group. Uh, the growing amount of e-waste in is mainly fueled uh, by higher consumption rates of electrical equipment. Uh, second, because the short life cycle, and the third, uh, because it's few repair option. The data given by Global E-Waste Monitor in 2020 show that Asia here, sorry, uh, uh, I was of my spotlight, okay, oh, sorry.
here. Uh, we see here that uh, Asia uh, generated the highest quantity of e-waste in 2019. It come about 24.9 million ton. And Indonesia, here, Indonesia is the highest e-waste generation in Southeast Asia. So we, let, we have a lot of homework uh, here in Indonesia. Uh, or we have a lot of opportunity to do, to uh, make a better Indonesia. Okay, so uh, I will complete uh, the previous presentation. Maybe some of the audience didn't know what is EEE, what is e-plastic, yeah. Uh, in our daily life, we practically live with our gadget or electronic device to support uh, our daily life. I mentioned here, when you wake up in the morning, some of you maybe start in the kitchen and open your refrigerator and start cooking with your rice cooker, oven, microwave, and then you go to the bathroom and use the water heater, hair dryer. They are, they are all uh, electronic equipment. And uh, after that, you go to the office with your motorcycle or car or using your gadget to communicate. Yeah, we saw the electronic device one day, it became a waste. Yeah. So waste electrical and electronic equipment are terms for electronic goods that are no longer used and thrown away because they are damaged or because they are outdated. And part of the uh, waste, there's a, some plastic part. And this is the uh, point of interest in this, uh, this, uh, in this presentation. By their waste management characteristic, we categorize in six uh, category. The first one is the uh, all uh, temperature exchange equipment, such as uh, cooling and freezing equipment, refrigerator, freezer, air conditioner, heat pump, screen and monitor, such as uh, television monitor, laptop, notebook, tablets. The third one is lamp, the category of lamps, uh, fluorescent lamp, high intensity discharge lamp, and LED lamp. The fourth is uh, large equipment such as washing machine, clothes dryer, this washing machine, and so on. The fifth is small equipment such as vacuum cleaner, microwave, uh, camera, calculator, radio, uh, even the small uh, medical devices. And the sixth is small IT and telecommunication equipment such as mobile phone, GPS, router, personal computer, printer, and telephone. So the uh, QA system and the scheme that uh, do not yet cover any kind of battery accumulation or electrical component of vehicles. So this uh, this is the oh, sorry the definition. Okay. Uh, in our daily life, we see here I. I give you some illustration that uh, we are uh, encouraged by the electrical or electronic devices every day. In the living room, we find uh, we could find television, video, yeah. And uh, can everybody please mention in the chat room or maybe. Uh, Directly, what kind of plastic that you that you um, that did you know used in electrical and electronic equipment? Maybe some some of participants could answer. It's already mentioned with uh, Mr. Christian and Mr. Carsten before. Yeah. 
No? Okay, this is some of plastic that uh, usually used uh, in electrical or electronic equipment. Yeah, we, we uh, already knew about PVC, PP, uh, EVA is uh, ethylene vinyl alcohol, polycarbonate, PC, PE, uh, ABS, yeah, the first layer. Sorry, I can see. Of this part, okay. and then uh, the other side you have epoxy resin, amino resin, alkyl resin, polyamide, uh, polymethyl pentan, polysulfone. All this is a uh, plastic that we can uh, find in electrical equipment. Uh, yeah, this this is more more detail about. Uh, each material like ABS, ABS you can find in your keyboard, your monitor, your compute, computer housing, and in PVC you can find in uh, all cabling, yeah, uh, for insulation, for wire insulation, usually you, we use PVC. Uh, in PP, we can find in many uh, household, yeah, and so on. You can uh, see later in the presentation. Uh, now, how is uh, the as as uh, with I told you that uh, plastic can constitute a significant part uh, of e-waste and can account for up twenty percent of it. And the recycling of e-waste plastic can be more complicated compared to plastic from other source due to presence of brominated flame retardants that we, uh, we put as an additive in plastic. Yeah, you see here uh, the, the use of flame retardant. The figure uh, above is an example of uh, electrical part without flame retardant and uh, uh, above is uh, we, we put some uh, additive, uh, flame retardant additive. Usually it's a brominated flame retardant, uh, but when we process, uh, we, when we do the, the uh, when uh, we recycle the plastic, it's uh, becoming uh, complicated, yeah. The processing, uh, of certain type of uh, flame retardant or persistent organic pollutant or POP is governed by the Stockholm Convention. In general, the guideline from Stockholm Convention state that the recycling or final disposal of article contain, containing uh, flame retardant or POP is covered under convention to be carried out in an environmental sound manner and should not lead to recovery of the BFR or POP for reuse. Traditionally, plastic recycling has been classified broadly into four categories, and the same categorization can be applied to e-waste plastic. The first one is a primary, is a mechanical a reprocessing of polymer waste into a product which has property equivalent to the original product. Secondary uh, is uh, still mechanical reprocessing of polymer into a product which has uh, properties lower than the original product. And the third tertiary is the process to recovery chemical constituent from polymer waste. And the fourth, the quaternary, is the waste to energy process. And how about the future technology? Yeah, the future, uh, the transformation. Uh, the technology. Uh, sorry, the technology uh, in the future. Uh, if if you see that the the first uh, 
uh, the few the recent technology we we start uh, in uh, by reduce the size of the plastic and then uh, do the sorting cleaning mat processing and extrusion or injection molding uh, the the future technology uh, is uh, transforming them into value added product as a, a green new briquet for steel making super capacitor silicon carbide polymer composite and 3d printing filament so uh, the presence of uh, flame retardant is a major hindrance for recycling of e waste plastic so uh, this is the uh, challenge also for the researcher to find the suitable technology for uh, to process the us plastic with uh, brominated flame retardant okay sorry uh, i have the uh, the video here maybe we can see uh, if we, uh, I can give you the illustration about the recycling of electronic part. Here we can see all of the uh, electronic part, screen, monitor, mobile phone, we separate. Uh, all the component you can turn in yeah, this this one is the plastic part it is shredded and uh, becoming uh, we reduce the size and after that we can uh, make another product okay Next is the regulation. Uh, the US uh, legislation uh, start in October 2019. Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, in 2014, only uh, 61 country covered by legislation, policy, and regulation. And in October, uh, we, we reached 71% uh, of population covered already by legislation. Uh, it counts 78 uh, country, but Indonesia is still not in this uh, group. Yeah. The international standard method methodology for measuring e-waste has been developed by uh, UNU cycle program in collaboration with task group on measuring e-waste within the UN partnership on measuring ICT for development. But uh, we know that having the best policy or regulatory framework in work mean nothing unless it's setting reachable target and effectively enforced. So how? Uh, the definition, role, and obligation of each stakeholder need to be clearly laid out into the regulation. In more detail, an EUS legislation or regulation must include definition for the role of municipality and the government, a clear definition of who is responsible for organizing the collection and recycling, a clear definition of who is responsible for financing the e-waste collection and recycling, national alignment on definition of e-waste, a permitting and licensing structure for e-waste collector and recycler, a clear definition of producer if the system is based uh, on so-called extended producer responsibility or EPR, uh, this one is uh, one of program uh, in many minist ministry, yeah, EPR. Without this, no producer will feel obligated to comply 
and the fair enforcement of legal provision across industry will be more difficult. And then the allocation of collection and recycling obligation among producer, a description of how companies shall register as producer, and the last is documentation of their compliance status and a clear description of the goal and target of the legislation. Okay, this is uh, the regulation in Indonesia uh, from national law. We have already uh, law on solid waste management dated in 2008. And uh, after that, we have a government regulation, PP. Yeah, here uh, three of PP that uh, related to the uh, e-waste management. And we have uh, here some uh, regulation coming from Minist uh, Ministry of uh, Trade, Ministry of Trade, here of Ministry of Public Works, because all is, is related when we, we talk about waste, yeah, uh, we should have a good coordination, coordination and uh, have a good uh, collaboration with other ministry. Okay, uh, e-waste generated in Indonesia. Estimation of e-waste generated in Indonesia is studied based on the four most common types of product found in Indonesia e-waste stream, which is a refrigerator, washing machine, television, and mobile mobile phone using population balance model. So this uh, mo this uh, study doing uh, recently in 2018, uh, and uh, they study with a population balance model. And we see here uh, the lifespan model for electrical and electronic product in Indonesia. We saw here that a mobile phone have a short life uh, lifespan comparing to the television and the longer is for refrigerator. Uh, the study also uh, give uh, an overview about a total e-waste generated in Indonesia by quantity. We saw here that uh, in 2028, the mobile phone is still the, the most uh, quantity yeah, in e for e-waste in Indonesia. But uh, in uh, by weight, yeah, by weight in tons, uh, given by washing machine. Now, what is the challenge and the opportunity in Indonesia? Uh, we see here the most exciting sector for the circular economy. Uh, the greater opportunity is uh, not, uh, it's more in waste management strategy and industry than to other economic sectors such energy, construction on, or environmental management. So the uh, waste solid here is uh, give uh, uh, most exciting for circular economy because uh, we can reduce 16 until 50% waste in every sector in, 2000, uh, in 2030 by implementing a circular economy. Yeah, you see here that if uh, in uh, 2030, by circular approach, we can reduce until 50%, hopefully. And what is the challenge? The challenge, uh, there is four uh, category, yeah. First one in terms of regulation and institutional. Yeah. We have business to business scheme of zoning for solid waste management. Yeah, that's a big challenge. Yeah. Partnership in data and information management on plastic waste. It's very interesting and it's so many, so many things we can do in this uh, area. Financial 
We can do effect, effective and efficient funding for solid waste management, public-private partnership in solid waste management, in the social, in the social uh, part, uh, we can do behavior change, communication, information and education on household waste management. So many, many of uh, researchers in social with competency in uh, social competency could uh, do this kind of uh, research in infrastructure. We can improve the solid uh, waste management infrastructure, strengthening the recycling industry, uh, as for example, uh, close to the waste source as possible, ensure of take care of recycling product, and then EPR implementation, producer redesign their packaging, how they include uh, using recycled content in their packaging, and proper take back collection system promote sustainable alternative for plastic packaging. So there's a lot of challenge that we can uh, still do in uh, our country. Yeah. And uh, this is some challenges uh, for researcher. Yeah. First one is uh, data analysis for chemical content on EWS for further implementing technology, technology for EWS management, data collecting for specific sources, data collecting from recycling facility, data collecting of post-consumer electronic products. So, so many, uh, many kind of research that we can uh, do in, in the uh, next, uh, in the, our uh, research group, yeah. Also, research for incentive system to encourage electronic producer doing EPR, innovation in recycling facility, coordination with local government to disclosure the e-waste management system, build program on how to encourage community willing to collect their e-waste. Also, research on integrated waste management strategy, research on waste management industry, and identity identify the best technology for sustainable material process and manufacture. And what is the opportunity in Indonesia? Actually, there's a five sector in Indonesia that have large potential to adopt a circular approach. And electrical, electronic here is uh, one of the five sector. The five sector represent uh, one uh, per a tier of Indonesia GDP and employee uh, about 43 million people in 2000, uh, 2019. So with this condition, we have uh, some opportunity like create a job opportunity, uh, create industry, recycle product, increase local content through circular economy activity, and reuse for the derivative product. Uh, here's the project or collaboration opportunity that uh, previously already was, uh, approached with uh, Franover, maybe. Uh, we could discuss later and also some uh, opportunity for funding uh, on, of international project, for example, in uh, climate and biodiversity protection yeah, with uh, Ranover, with German government, with uh, Murdoch University, with industry, maybe with uh, Biopharma, Asahima, Chandra Asri. I saw uh, some participant present here. Uh, okay, this is the, my last uh, slide. Uh, I hope that we can uh, do some uh, project after this webinar series and we can make a better 
in the uh, environment for Indonesia, I close with uh, some quote given, given by Sir David Attenberg in COP recently. Uh, I like what he said, yeah. We are, after all, the greatest problem so far to have ever existed on Earth. So uh, it's our job, the researcher, to give the, the problem solving with uh, existing condition. Thank you, and I hope that uh, I can, uh, this presentation is useful for you. Thank you. And I give to back to Pak Nugroho as moderator. Thank you, Bu Ernie, for your uh, comprehensive presentation. We directly continue with the question and answer session. Uh, any direct question from Pak Mego? Mungkin uh, Pak Mego, you are still here. Maybe you want to ask some question or Prof Bambang Prasetya. We give special first question to Pamego and Prof Bamba. If no, uh, we, I will read the question from the chat box. The first question from Pak Paul Wijaya. I know, I think I know him. He's from uh, PPI, uh, Persatuan Insinyur Indonesia, PII. Uh, to, to question Pak Paul. Waste to energy for plastic treatment is not environmentally safe process. It will admit also hazardous materials, also dioxins. And uh, is there some way to capture treat to hazardous materials? Maybe Bu Ernie or our colleagues from, from Fraunhofer Institute want to answer directly this question. Bu Ernie mungkin, atau Mr. Karsten for this question, please. Yeah, I, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Bu Erni, monggo. Yeah. Uh, I think there's already some uh, technology uh, to uh, for for uh, uh, this problem. Yeah, uh, we know that uh, dioxin uh, is. Uh, one of uh, hazardous vapor that we must uh, give uh, more attention when we burn the, the plastic, yeah. Uh, but uh, the technology, the, there's some in the in the maybe in the uh, next webinar we can. Uh, if us some uh, overview about this uh, the technology because actually there is a uh, uh, several several technology already uh, done yeah uh, many researchers have already find uh, the way or the process yeah to uh, to uh, 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 the the dioxin in in uh, when we burn the, the plastic yeah so um, I think uh, if we uh, give in uh, I, I don't uh, prepare the slide but uh, there's already uh, some technique yeah some technique in applied in some uh, TPA yeah. Uh, or some incinerator that can capture the dioxin and the, the vapor or the gas is already clean. Thank you, Berni. Uh, Miss, maybe Mr. Karsten, or we go to the next question from Bu Amita. Yeah. Karsten, Mr. Karsten, would you yeah. like to answer? Yeah. Yeah, maybe very briefly. Um, Basically, the dioxin problem is, is also uh, related uh, to the copper content. Uh, copper acts as catalyst um, in, in this um, game. 
so to speak. Uh, so keeping copper out of uh, the uh, process when burning the plastics already helps to reduce uh, the uh, dioxins. But uh, this, of course, um, is important when you are talking about housing plastics, for example. Uh, from electric and electronic appliances, it doesn't really help for the printed circuit board because <laughs> then that is definitely the, the mixture of both. So you you can't properly uh, separate it. And the the other point is uh, that uh, dioxins um, are not directly generated in in the burning process, but rather recombine when the um, off gas uh, when the um, off gas uh, cools down again. So control better this kind of process and have a proper abatement process. Uh, there in, in the off-gas stream. Uh, this is then uh, the the more important aspect uh, here, actually, um, to reduce uh, dioxins. And well, linking over then to uh, the question from uh, Amita. Um, yeah. You answer directly. Yes, yes. <laughs> What's the most important aspect to be prepared for processing electronic waste? Yes. Yeah. Um, so actually, where we are doing um, actually bad is uh, th that we uh, uh, rely pretty much on, let's say, uh, root mechanical processes. So the shredder. So for, for just for, for cost reasons, uh, we put uh, almost everything um, as soon as possible into some kind of shredder, uh, to, just to make things small and let uh, the machinery then later on sort things. Um, this is only uh, this is a very efficient approach in terms of uh, processing huge masses, but it's not very efficient in terms of separating materials uh, in, a, in a proper way. So in, in, in that way, we always try to find uh, somehow ways that there's more manual disassembly, more manual separation. Um, because uh, if, if you keep it um, certain materials, for example, the plastics from the housings, and uh, Annie, you have shown then the various materials which we find in these devices. So to, to keep uh, these plastics um, separate from each other right from the beginning, um, this is worthwhile then to come to better uh, recycled fractions uh, later on uh, as well. The, the short video clip you've uh, shown is, uh, is, is excellent. It was extremely short, so th that's uh, why uh, it's hard to judge uh, what exactly is, is, is going on there. Um, but uh, let's say the uh, what, what we have seen there, somebody putting some plastic parts into a shredder and, and then sell, uh, saying afterwards what comes out of that um, can go into new products uh, and it's right away useful for good products. So I just speculate that maybe prior to that, uh, he doesn't just put everything, uh, every plastic part into the shredder, uh, but has different boxes before that already. So to, uh, keeping the plastic types from various sources, from various house, uh, housings, from various appliances uh, separate, and he knows hopefully very well uh, which plastic parts to bring together with which other plastic parts so that you can use uh, make good use of the flakes uh, after that. So and, and, and that uh, if he's really doing that, but I hope so, um, then this is already much better than uh, what we are doing here typically in Europe because we just <laughs> don't have, have, have actually the, the time uh, to, to sort these things. It's uh, way too costly. Um, no, so in, 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 in that way, really, what, what, wherever you can keep something uh, where manual disassembly and manual separation um, by well-educated people who know what they are doing and uh, which uh, material fits to which other materials or where... Uh, to, to, to recognize a certain polymer types also just from knowing where it comes from, how it looks like, a bit analytics experience. Uh, so then this is already a big step forward uh, for recyclability and uh, to put in place a circular economy, uh, economy really on a, on a high level. Thank you, Mr. Karsten. Buamita ready to ask the question directly, yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, I would like to know um, for the person or people who are uh, doing the separation of the uh, part of the equipment, any equipment, do you apply a certain certification for that people? Mm. Well, of course, there's also a certain education uh, to work in such kind of uh, uh, facility. Uh, however, the problem is, um, let's say, 
bit less uh, the, the education, but rather the economic pressure. So th that uh, even if you are very well educated, um, you, you just don't uh, have uh, actually the time to separate uh, the devices manually in, in these uh, fractions. Um, here in Europe, we let the machinery do the job. And the machinery is not doing a perfect job. So there's always uh, some contamination because as soon as it gets into a shredder, you have some dust, you have everything everywhere somehow. And then um, keeping it separate right from the beginning would be uh, the much uh, much better approach here, actually. So, okay. and okay. I, I know also from some, some other companies that um, even without a distinct, um, education. If, if you are really a practitioner in, in this uh, business and uh, if you are aware of um, who might be interested in the outcome of, of your process, um, you develop a certain specific uh, skills. Yeah. So um, it's, it's uh, many years ago uh, from, uh, it was actually from, from another Asian uh, country, uh, then I, I heard this uh, story that they are um, dismantling uh, then um, larger electrical equipment um, and, and the workers there had the ability really to separate um, six to eight different um, aluminum alloys just by, by having a look at uh, the, the aluminum parts um, recognizing somehow what, what might be the constituents uh, how it looks like how it's used like in, in, in that way, uh, they, they were able manually really to separate six to eight different aluminum alloy fractions. And then if, if you keep this separate, of, of course, you're already in the position um, ready to recycle it on a much higher level, then bring all these aluminum alloys together and then it cast alloy in, in, in the end, uh, somehow a, a mixture. So keeping separate what can be kept separate is here the key message then. I think uh, it's, it's clear, I, or maybe we have to make a workshop here. Last in Indonesia, <laughs> you come to Indonesia and uh, especially make the specific workshop for this certification for e-waste uh, recycling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's yeah. see. Yeah. Please welcome, come to Indonesia. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, another question. This is from Pak Edi Wiloso and me, almost the same. The question, Pak Edi, maybe want to ask directly or I have to read this question, Pak Edi. Yeah, I think that's quite clear. You can read it. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, to Mr. Karsten and Christian, do you have to follow some kind of PCR or guidelines for doing the LC of e-waste uh, product category rules? Maybe Christian or Karsten want to answer. Mm, well, maybe I can say that uh, we, our experience in LCA is mostly uh, in the production of equipment. Um, so uh, the, the battery example is one where really the, the production side um, was the most relevant one and where we really go into detail. And uh, the end of life uh, is, is not really the, let's say, the specialty of, of the Institute. Um, so I'm, I'm personally not aware of any PCR specifically for e-waste recycling or whether there's one uh, being prepared yes. at the moment. Um, it's already it released, could... the PCR that you made? Um, uh, for batteries, I believe there's, uh, there, there is a PCR, at least a there's at least a version, uh, a version of it available, but we are also not involved in, in generating it. So the, the, the LCA that we did for the battery uh, was like, a, let's say, a, a full LCA according to ISO standards, but it was uh, before the whole um, PCR process uh, really started for batteries. So I think the, the project for batteries began, uh, um, we worked on in 2014, 2015. Uh, so at the time... How to access that PCR, uh, Christian? Maybe because of some P some PCR is uh, very restricted to access. Mm. That's a good question, uh, Carsten. Are you aware whether this is uh, published uh, <laughs> by now? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so we, we have to discuss internally somehow. Um, I, um, <laughs> does this uh, refer to the 
has uh, category rules than Christian, what you, what you have in mind? So, yes. Because that, that uh, should be released. I, I'm not fully sure um, how much that refers then also to the, the end of life processing of batteries, but should be included somehow. I haven't had a look at uh, directly. So, mm -hmm. and, but uh, these um, category rules for the it's a European drug environmental footprint. Um, they uh, should be in, in the public domain. Uh, so we can check out, but uh, pretty sure these are published because the European Commission is pretty much interested that it's um, implemented broadly, accepted broadly, and it stems also from a public um, stakeholder process. So that one should be available. We'll, we'll find out and let you know afterwards. Yeah. 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 It seems is, uh... to be available. I just did a quick Google search and I can post the link here. Yes, yes, please. Thank you. Because I think it's very in, in, important for Indonesia to have a standardization of doing the LCA, uh, especially with the electronic uh, devices and then electronic waste. Thank you, Christian, to share the link. And uh, uh, my another question, uh, do you also develop the specific methodology in doing the LCA for the electronic electronic electric devices and or also electronic waste e-waste maybe not the um, methodology um, but actually to get uh, the um, underlying analysis all right when it comes to individual um, electric and electronics components uh, this is rather important uh, and where an understanding of uh, how things uh, are made it is uh, extremely helpful because uh, what we see um, frequently in, in LCA and if you want to go for a kind of, let's say, screening approach or so, um, you usually make it somehow weight-based. All the background data somehow modeled based on, on, on the weight, uh, how much grams or kilograms go into some kind of product or so. And this doesn't really work uh, for, for electronics because uh, there you have other technical parameters uh, size uh, parameters, complexity parameters, uh, which drive uh, the environmental impacts. Um, and, and this is what um, we uh, try to figure out uh, frequently, where we also try to keep pace of uh, what is going on. Um, and where we, for example, have this one uh, project uh, now here with uh, German funding um, on the supply chain issues, um, where we try to establish uh, then also a framework, how to inquire properly data at suppliers uh, that you not ask uh, how many kilograms of a printed circuit board you've got, uh, but that uh, along with that, uh, you get uh, the right uh, technical parameters. So it's uh, layers and uh, number, it's uh, the overall, uh, overall area size, um, the type of uh, printed circuit board uh, technology, surface finish, etc. All this matters then more than uh, just the pure uh, weight of uh, the part. Um, and, and that's where um, we, we, uh, we devote uh, quite a lot of uh, work uh, onto. I wouldn't say it's really methodology um, um, work because it's all in, in the frame of existing LCA uh, methodology, but it's rather to being more precise and more accurate uh, on, on the modeling uh, side, uh, reflecting the technologies. Thank you, Karsten. And thank you, uh, Christian, for sharing the PDF file of the European Environmental Footprint. It's very important uh, to be used in Indonesia, as, at least uh, as a, our reference. Uh, we go to the next question to, from uh, Miss Iin Parlina. She, she, she's from our institution, Vin. Uh, Miss Iin want to ask directly. I know he's, she's doing the circular economic right now for the e-waste. Uh, you are here now or you want to ask me to read this question okay i will read uh, in your op in your opinion based on your experience what is the most crucial barriers for the developing country for a developing country like indonesia to apply to implement the circular economic approach for e-waste processing and how to solve the problems because you have uh, you are from european countries it's a bit different uh, habit <laughs> Uh, European Western people and then the Asian Asian people, maybe Christian or or Kasten, you want to answer, Christian, perhaps because your <laughs> wife is <sees> Indonesian. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> 
So the question is, what are the main barriers for implementing uh, e-waste recycling system? Did I understand correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, um, as Carsten described earlier, there's there's some some advantages, uh, of course, also to uh, to being to being able to do uh, manual work. Basically, we have we have the system here. Uh, it's all driven by cost in the end, um, in my view. So uh, in the end, like producing a pro product, especially electronics product, is uh, um, associated with a lot of uh, individual process steps and high tech and the semiconductor manufacturing in uh, in clean rooms. And there's a lot of energy consumption, a lot of materials are being used. And then as Carsten described earlier, the end of life is simply, at least in Europe, simply putting it into a mechanical shredder and uh, producing small bits and then trying to separate them as best as possible. Um, and I think in Europe, this is, uh, so as it's all cost driven, um, what helped, uh, what probably helps a lot is, uh, as was also mentioned in uh, the previous presentation, uh, extended producer responsibility. So a mix of uh, different legislation uh, that enforces uh, recycling. So um, in a let's say in a free market, of course, the the companies producing and selling the goods they simply want to sell the sell the products to consumers, and then they don't want to have anything to do with it anymore, uh, because economically so far it's it's not interesting for them to be involved in the recycling process. Um, but um, so, so a, a web, let's say, of different uh, legislation that uh, enforces um, the, let's say, the or enables the, the proper funding of recycling activities. Uh, so, if the if the producers of the electronic components are responsible also for uh, recycling uh, or at least funding a recycling um, process or system, I think that's a that's a good first step. Um, uh, we also have in different legislation, let's say, uh, recycling uh, rates that are um, that are how do you say, uh, yeah, legislatively mandatory. So uh, there's the WEEE directive, for example, which um, uh, st states uh, specific recycling rates that should be met in terms of the the mass of products that go on the market and the mass of a material that is supposed to be recycled from these products, but it's all, it's all, yeah, it's, at this stage, it's all not exactly a perfect system in any way. So there's still a lot of material that's being lost. And if you have recycling rates that focus on, let's say, how much mass needs to be recycled, right now we're at uh, something like uh, either 45 or even 65% of material that needs to be recycled. So if you have one ton of electric equipment that goes on the market, at least um minimum half of that should be collected and recycled but that's not very much uh, at all so um, in in yeah just to recap in my view legislation is very important because in a yeah, free market uh, recycling does not seem to be uh, or the econo economics of recycling do not seem to be a um, sufficient uh, driver thank you christian a very interesting uh, discussion. Uh, we go to the next question from the Pabeni from the National Standardization Agency of Indonesia, uh, standard standardization uh, agency. Uh, would you like to answer directly, Pabeni, or I have to read your question? Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Nugroho. So my question uh, to Mr. Uh, Mr. Karsten and Mr. Christian. Uh, guten Morgen, Herr Christian and Herr uh, Karsten. Wie geht es Ihnen? <laughs> Danke, sehr gut. Danke, yes. Es gut, es besser mit gut. Okay, I'm sorry, my question in English version. <laughs> so, uh, in your slide presentation, it's very clearly uh, talk about impact battery production and recycling. Uh, link to uh, life cycle assessment is good idea. Uh, another case, uh, could you explanation to us on your experience of a life cycle assessment scheme for standard to compare of many industries in the world? Thank you very much. Vielen Dank. 
thank you Pak Benny, uh, Karsten, maybe you responsible for the LCA in the world for the electronic devices. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, um, well, I, I would say um, yeah, standardization and standard as such is, is extremely uh, important. But I think as it shines through with uh, some other questions we, we had here, um, just uh, the blank uh, standards without category rules, this is a bit tricky when it comes to comparability. Um, and this actually also where um, industry and also policymakers are really struggling uh, still currently. Uh, because um, LCA still comes with uh, so many um, parameters, assumptions, um, and boundary conditions uh, you, you have to apply. Um, so that uh, I would say if, if two very experienced LCA practitioners would get exactly the same task of doing an LCA, they would not end up with the same result. There, there, there would be certain differences in, in there. Um, so that would be an excellent uh, exercise to have such kind of blind test uh, somehow at a certain point of time. I'm not aware of that uh, yet. Um, but this already shows somehow that it is uh, very tricky um, in, a, in a policy context really to require comparable data and to compare two products based on two different LCAs. Um, so the, the European Commission is still pushing pretty much for that kind of approach. Uh, to put that into legislation somehow. Uh, they are not very clear yet um, how it should show up, if it would be an LCA label somehow, uh, mandatory for products or so, or if it's just reflected um, in public procurement, uh, which is to a certain extent uh, already, um, or which other form th this should take it. It could be also um, some kind of thresholds on environmental impacts over a drug life cycle. Um, so which would be then maybe the strictest uh, appliance of, uh, of LCA. Um, so LCA is, is, is not yet uh, there. I'm not sure when it will be there. So some institutions are working on that. So let's, let's see. As, as of now, as I've shown, uh, policymakers at least uh, use it in, in the background somehow to assess the overall market to get the priorities right and, and for that um, it's, it's pretty it's a pretty nice and, and good tool to get uh, the priorities right internally uh, to figure out what matters most and maybe shoot out a figure now and then uh, somehow for PR reasons um, as well um, as uh, shown uh, here by, by Fronius um, for the PV inverters. So this is a really good thing to do. And this already creates, uh, creates a lot of momentum. So because um, what, what we really see, uh, some companies are putting out there such kind of analysis um, and others just feel forced to, to follow suit somehow. So, oh, my competitor is doing that. So let's do it as well. If, if the numbers compare in the end, is maybe not the most important thing, uh, but that companies follow this kind of life cycle thinking, um, just uh, following the figures. Uh, I, I think this is the most important effect here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if uh, some, some, uh, present, uh, some discussion on the COP26 about the e-waste, uh, maybe you have some, some idea what they, they discuss in the COP26, if they're also discussing the e-waste there. But the Anyway, uh, thank you for uh, your presentation, uh, your uh, answer, uh, Mr. Kasten. We we have a limited time, so uh, we go to the next question. Oh, my question: Is there any <laughs> is there any derivative derivative products from the US that already have ecolabel certification in Germany or in another countries? If you if you know somehow. Yeah. I, th I rather think this is um, uh, then uh, embedded in some other kind of labels. So the yes, yes, the the Blue Angel label, for example. Um, I th think they might have some uh, criteria um, on that. And um, actually, also here the uh, US-based uh, label, the the EPEAT system. They, they also award certain points uh, if you have uh, recycled content uh, in, in your products. 
Um, so in, in that way, yes. Um, but other ways, um, a dedicated label uh, that, in, let's say, product, electronics product, yeah. gets, uh, gets a certain label. This contains recycled material. Um, yeah. Just as uh, the, the main label, I, I'm not aware of that. I, I also have to say, um, maybe also for very good reasons uh, for quite a long time, because until, I would say, two, three or four years ago, recycled material in high valued products had really a bad reputation somehow. Um, so, in, in, and therefore it was for uh, really many, many years. So, so uh, recycled materials were in place already 20 years ago or so. Um, but uh, really marketing departments were extremely carefully to communicate that because it, it really gave some of them pressure. Well, why don't I get something new for my money? So I, I want to get something new. I don't want to get the old stuff. Uh, uh, so that was uh, then rather the perception when it came to uh, re uh, recycled material. This has materially changed in, in, the, in the last few years, uh, I would say. And companies are also promoting this more. Um, but I think uh, this history is also one of the reasons uh, why there's no dedicated label yet for saying, well, this product contains 30% recycled material. So. Thank you. Very interesting, Karsten. Because I wonder uh, if we can find some, some list of the product that already have the certification of the Ecolabel from the, from the recycling materials. I know, I know Ibu, uh, IBU. The, that's the Germany certification company for the Eco Label, but mostly the the certification is for the building materials. But maybe yeah, they okay. yeah, yeah, maybe they expand the certification to the electronic waste. Uh, I'm looking to it. I will ask the the the, the director Alexander Roder. I, I I think he's he's the director, right? Uh, uh, we go to the next question from Pa Benny again. So, uh, I will read. This is a uh, Related with the, your experience on the LCS scheme standard on the electrical vehicles industries, we know that uh, there's a uh, there are a lot of automot automotive industries in uh, Germany. Uh, we we understand that they're also doing the LCA. How how they their their your research on that or their the research on this industry in Germany how they can improve the industry efficiency, for example, like that, regarding mm -hmm. the standard. Christian, maybe you want to answer this? Yeah, I can I can uh, not really answer though because um, we we are not uh, we are not involved with um, the let's say most recent research on life cycle assessment applied to the uh, automotive sector. So there's uh, other institutes, including other Fraunhofer institutes, which is one out of uh, 72 uh, Fraunhofer institutes um, that uh, that are really uh, involved with automotive LCA. So um, I was involved with automotive LCA that was uh, a long time ago, in 2012, and not since. So I, I cannot really give a, uh, let's say, a very current response. How about the electrical vehicle, electric vehicle, especially with the battery management system or battery parts? Is also you have some such kind of the experience with the development of the standard? Yes. Uh, Mr. Christian? Mm -hmm. No, we're not involved with that. No, we're basically we mostly we're mostly involved uh, with um, the electronics parts, uh, but uh, not really within the automotive sector. So uh, in terms of batteries, it's also more about smaller batteries, like uh, batteries you would have in a, you know, laptop, smartphone, tablet, etc. Uh, sometimes a little larger, maybe like e-bike, uh, uh, that kind of size, but um, not really for the automotive sector. Charging station? How about the charging station? Uh, mm, well, can I ask again what what are you, what are you asking about in this case? Or what is the question? About, about the electrical electric part on the charging station? So is it about is, what was the question about? Was it the standards for life cycle assessment? Yes, or? yes, 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 yes. Standard for the life cycle assessment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I would also have to look it up, to be honest. So um, for, for which types of product categories are there already, let's say, product category rules? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. for which type of products are they already published? Yeah. Uh, I would also have to look it up. Um, so, yeah, Maybe cannot answer can... it spontaneously. No, no problem. Uh, we can discuss later on because uh, it's uh, growing very fast in the world. We cannot keep, catch up. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially from the uh, uh, industry from China, very fast, running very fast. Okay, we have uh, another question from the... Oh, another question. Can I ask again from Irem Parlina? How about the technology side? Is there any certain suitable... suitable Technology that can be used as a recommendation to fit a developing country condition for the e-waste processing that, as you said, that we have a barriers in the funding and etc. Suitable technology. The best technology for the developing countries that you recommended. You recommend. Uh, any, any recommendation? <laughs> Christian or uh, mm. Pa Karsten, her Karsten? For the, I think Carsten already answered a part of that. So Carsten yeah, yeah, yeah. already answered for the pre-processing part. Let's yeah, say yeah. so. Uh, the the more you can separate by hand, uh, the or the more let's say of the individual uh, materials you can separate, um, yeah. better. But I think another very important aspect is uh, collecting as well. So yeah. that's less let, let's say less technology. Uh, yep. But more to have a collection system in place that tries to capture as much of the e-waste as possible. Yep. I think yep. um, that is a very important aspect, um, not only in the cities, but also on the countryside, because, of course, technology is everywhere. Uh, and to to get the material back uh, for recycling process, I think that is a, that is a huge task. Um, and... Uh, I would also be very interested in what the what the status is of that in in Indonesia and how the sector uh, works. I mean, Germany is uh, compared to Indonesia is a small country, yeah. and it's also very um, urbanized. So you have collection systems in place uh, everywhere, and still, um, statistically speaking, um, we don't we we are far away from collecting 100 of all the of all the e waste. Uh, so. Yeah, that's that's the collection part, and uh, for for the pre-processing, as as Carsten described earlier, um, if it's possible to to have a sector, a recycling sector, in which a lot of the materials are separated, then for let's say for recycling rates, this is this is the best approach. Yeah, I everything that's we... after, let's say every everything that comes after the separation of materials, then is is of course uh, different recycling processes like copper smelters and uh, let's say yeah um, the special let's say spe specialized recycling operators for for different materials and um, th those need to be in place uh, but yeah um, uh, I, would, I would I would I would not really know what the what the status is in in Indonesia and what kind of recycling facilities you have in place. Yeah, so that's why I think you have to visit uh, uh, Indonesia in the near future when you go to Sukuba, Japan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. Yes, I think we are in the end of our oh. discussion. Oh, any question? Any other question? No? Um, can I follow up the my questions before? Yeah, 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 please. Uh, yeah, I think um, yeah, for the collection part, yeah, it's true because uh, we have, uh, you know, like archipelagic uh, ge geographical condition that uh, becomes the barrier for Indonesia's collection uh, system too. But then uh, the thing that I'm actually asking for the technological uh, aspect for the US processing is about like... Um, for the you know like for the crushing and stuff like uh, as we know we have uh, information about hydrometallurgical uh, technology pyrometallurgical uh, technology I don't know I mean in your uh, opinion uh, for Indonesia condition or perhaps like uh, for general developing countries in the world 
is there any like uh, more suitable technology that suit a lot for the condition in uh, those countries? The best technology for the uh, for specific ge geographical location or for the specific countries, maybe uh, Mr. Carson. Yeah, that, that that is really a very tricky question um, because let's say most of the value in um, electronics products uh, is really with what is on the printed circuit board, around the printed circuit board, etc. And uh, that, that uh, means then. Uh, the focus is on just as you describe it, hydrometallurgy or pyrometallurgy. Hydrometallurgy is unfortunately not uh, that efficient, typically, uh, to, to my knowledge. Um, so when it comes to uh, recovery of uh, the individual parts and pieces, because you have, um, need to have some kind of surface access to the materials to solve it and um, to, uh, to get it back. So therefore, the recovery rates, uh, unfortunately, with uh, hydrometallurgy uh, are not that high as with uh, pyrometallurgy. That's why let's say environmentally wise and technology wise, uh, the recommendation would be rather to go to pyrometallurgy, uh, but um, these are really high, uh, high scale, um, um, very expensive um, facilities. So with, with um, hydrometallurgy, you can go small scale, to a certain extent, uh, what this pyrometallurgy uh, really to, to pay off and uh, the abatement technology you need for that, uh, it's, it's really something uh, you need to do on a large scale. And th that's why there are that's, uh, a few large smelters um, which can uh, deal with that kind of stuff. I, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, in, in Europe, it might be three large smelters, but not even more. Um, so, and, uh, but, but it requires investment. Uh, I think each of these uh, facilities were an investment of uh, around about $2 billion compared to hmm, something like this. Uh, and, and therefore, it's, it's really the question if, if that qualifies for, for other countries um, as, uh, as a blueprint uh, as well, if, if you have to uh, go so huge right from, uh, from the beginning. Um, so you see, in, in that way, I'm a bit stumbling around with uh, making uh, proper recommendations because uh, I actually don't have a proper solution uh, for that. Uh, it's, it's still partly rather separating materials as, as possible and then maybe really leaving the processing of certain fractions, which can be better treated elsewhere to be shipped than somewhere else in, in, in the world. So the, the large recyclers are prepared to accept material from, uh, from a global source um, or really to, to make a huge uh, national effort to, to build up a similar facility than in uh, your region. Would be worthwhile from, from the, the amounts of material uh, which uh, should be there. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Karsten, for your uh, comprehensive uh, answer. Uh, I think we are in the end of this uh, webinar. I just uh, want to show everyone here that uh, as uh, Mr. The, the, as the Christian sent us the link for the product category rules for the high specific energy rechargeable battery for the mobile application, I think it's very interesting discussion on this PCR since uh, I think it's also in the European that the, we, you know that the Indonesia now uh, we are growing very fast on the battery uh, developing yes. industry because we have uh, more than. 56% of the nickel resources in the world are located in Indonesia. And now our country is, uh, is def, uh, establishing a new, new consortium company for the, Indo we call it the Indonesia Battery Corporation. And it will supply, uh, I think, uh, not only in the Indonesian market, but also in the world. And uh, we need the uh specific specific standard for the for the battery uh, product uh for example like this product uh, environmental footprint category rules i think it's uh, very interesting to be applied in indonesia situation uh and we can discuss in the in the near future between uh, our institution brin and then fraunhofer institute to develop this uh uh, product category rules and also the capacity building. I think uh, both mm -hmm. of us agree on this. Uh, really, I agree. 
Ya. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, because uh, Pak Mego Pinandi though still here, uh, Pak the the beauty chairman of our institution still here, Pak Mego, if you are uh, available, you would you like to make the closing remark for this discussion? Uh, if you are available now, okay. Maybe okay. Thank you, Pak Mego. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I uh, set off the camera since I have discussion in uh, other things. But again, I'm, I'm still uh, uh, joined with uh, this uh, discussion. So uh, hopefully, uh, you are all of. Uh, participant have already uh, discussed and get the information regarding to the circular economy and how to link with the, uh, especially in the sustainable production system and life cycle assessment of uh, electronics and e-waste and uh, of course with the uh, polymer or uh, plastics. So, yes. Then, uh, gimana Pak Nugroho? Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, maybe you would like to uh, give some uh, what is the conclusion that may, uh, what we can do in the future in terms of the collaboration between Fraunhofer Institute uh, and uh, BIN regarding the developing uh, capacity building and then uh, collaboration research on this. For example, in the last uh, discussion, I saw the the product category rules for the battery that they developed in Europe. Uh, and it may it might uh, applicable for Indonesian situation since our country now establishing the, the, the industry for the battery from the nickel in uh, Sulawesi and uh, Maluku. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, yes, uh, thank you. I think <clears throat> regarding to the what we uh, we have been discussed, uh, we discussed just now regarding to the such kind of the importance of the measuring sustainable to support circular economic and also <clears throat> uh, our uh, Indonesian policy regarding to the electric vehicles and such kind of supporting like a battery and, and charging a station and the other uh, uh, recycling process of the plastics and also polymer, which almost part of the uh, electronic devices or smartphone or laptops and so on need uh, to be more uh, uh, given uh, attention to this. And uh, I think uh, offering of the international collaboration between uh, BRIN uh, and also Fraunhofer uh, ICM is the uh, appropriate uh, thinking to be uh, discussed more in detail in determining what kind of the activities we'll be uh, planning in the future. So I think uh, uh, I agree that we, we are uh, continuing in the discussion for uh, getting more uh, specific uh, planning regarding to the collaboration between Brin and also uh, Fraunhofer in the future, uh, not, not only uh, limited with uh, what we discuss now, but of course we can also extend to other uh, more uh, wider uh, subject as the, uh, uh, we know that some, somehow sometimes uh, the, the subject is needed to be a discussion uh, regarding to this matter. I mean, the uh, life cycle uh, assessment and uh, sustainable uh, developing in the future. I think, uh, thank you very much for uh, Dr. Carsten. 
Sneaker and also Dr. Christian Krems who are joining and also discussing more and more regarding to the uh, what we have been done in the future and some uh, uh, answer from our uh, question regarding to this uh, content. Again, thank you very much for this uh, 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 seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mego Pinanito, as the Deputy Chairman of the National uh, Research and Innovation Agency of Indonesia. And also thank you very much for our colleagues from the overseas uh, Fraunhofer Institute, uh, Mr. Karsten Skiske and Christian Klem, uh, Professor also from our institution, uh, Honorable uh, Speaker, Professor Bambang Prastia, Dr. Edi Suwanto Wiloso, and also Ms. Uh, Ernie Sukocho. I hope uh, we continue our discussion in uh, soon as soon as possible to work with the to work with the uh, formulating the the proposal and finalizing the proposal together for the international collaboration uh, thank you very much Karsten and Christians for uh, today I, I so, sorry to take you long time half day half day workshop uh, uh, we took a lot no of problem. time for, <laughs> of your uh, day today. Uh, hope we meet again in the new future and come, please come to Indonesia, especially Christian. He, he has to come to Indonesia one a year. Thank you very much for your coming yeah. to join the meeting. Thanks as well. It was a well spent time, I would say. Hmm? Yes, sorry. Yeah. Oh, our pleasure. Terima kasih. Yes. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Selamat siang. Selamat sore. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih.